episode of Shield of Tomorrow, everybody. Um, your GM, Eric, and this is our beloved crew and cast. Oh, <laughs> the applause. We are trying something new this episode. I was actually threatening the cast right before the, the cameras went up. Because, you know, in Crit Roll, it's the cast swearing at the DM, so I was, like, trying to do a reverse. But uh, then Sam threatened my life, so we're just going to jump into the announcements. I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> So let's go ahead and we'll just go ahead and jump into it. We have some pretty big announcements tonight. Um, the first thing I want to announce is anybody going to Star Trek Las Vegas this weekend? Um, you can spot our very own Aliza is going to be there. Um, and Aliza is going to be on a panel with Miss Gates McFadden. Who is going uh, talking about women in sci-fi, isn't that correct? Some women in TNG specifically. Women in TNG. So yes. You're yes. just aggressively cool, Eliza. That is pretty rad. Mm -hmm. um, are you going to be there this year, Bonnie? I was planning on it, but we have a gig ah. now. Oh. So I'll announce Work that later. Work calls. <laughs> yeah, so anybody going to, to Star yeah. Trek Vegas uh, uh, for the big convention? I've never been to a Star Trek convention in my oh. life. I wanted to go. It's too last minute. We're still recovering from Comic Con, so that's the tough thing. That's real. Um, next yeah. year, we're next going. year. Yeah. Next oh, year. dude, that would be rad. Let's just get a road trip going. We'll we'll paint we'll paint USS Sally right on the side mm. of the car. And we'll drive out to Vegas. My car's already painted because I'm crazy. No, I'm just kidding. Yay. <laughs> um, so uh, on Wait, that so note. You were like, just in case. <laughs> what day and what time is that panel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Um, the panel's on Friday. I don't know the t exact time yet. OK, we'll get that Friday. to you guys. We'll, we'll tweet it out. Post it. I'll um, it'll be next week's episode. We'll on that it. note, yeah. we do have a Twitter account for Shield of Tomorrow right now that's constantly feeding updates. If you guys want to stick to it, it's at Shield of TMRW something or other. You can, you'll find it. We're retweeting it all the time. Um, yeah. Uh, and real quick before I move on to the next announcement, I just want to thank everybody who approached us at Comic-Con. It was so Yay! great seeing you guys. Um, I got approached a couple of times. It was great seeing uh, Shield of Tomorrow fans. It was really touching to run into a lot of TBD RPG fans. Um, it was just generally, it was amazing. Thank you so much for making that Comic-Con incredible. It was really rad. Uh, so thank you guys. Um, real quick, oh, and another thing before I move on to the next announcement. Um, supposedly, um, I was informed by Ed, uh, one of our, our big wigs here at uh, the company, that uh, there was a couple on, the, uh, a pair that has met in alpha chat and apparently is going out on a date tonight. Oh, that's and, adorable. And, they're, and their first date is going to be watching this episode. <gasps> that's so, a possible first date. We'll make so, it extra sexy. Whoever you are, I'm not. shouting you out. The holodeck oh. episode is go. <laughs> Just remember, <laughs> can cause damage to furniture. So uh, we're going to move on. <laughs> um, okay, so our big, big announcement is, of course, Star Trek Online. We have a partnership yes. with Star Trek Online, which I'm super excited about. I've been playing that game since beta. I was there when they were going to close beta down, and uh, the Borg invaded Starbase 1, and all hell broke loose, and Klingon players were able to enter Federation space. It was nuts. Um, I, I've been playing that game. I've been a lifetime subscriber for a while now. I am a big fan of it. Um, we're having a giveaway. So during the break today, uh, so tonight, exciting. during the break, uh, during this episode on our break, um, stay active in chat, and we're going to be doing uh, we're going to be doing giveaway codes for the temporal agent starter pack. Um, so stick what around. What is that? That sounds cool. Sounds it is right. rad. Be, cool. They're Did doing. We get one? They're kidding. doing. They're doing something. <laughs> actually, that's going to be the next announcement. But okay, um, cool. they're doing something really rad. So right now, Star Trek Online has got two of my favorite Star Trek actors have come back to do VO for their characters. That's Tony Todd is returning as Rodek. Yes. And JG uh, yes. Hertzler, who is Martok, is also returning uh, wait, to reprise his role. Wait, wait, we ran into him in Comic-Con. Did you? Having dinner in the, the restaurant next to our oh, Star Trek Oh my God, I would have lost my generation mind. Generation show. That's really? Amazing. Are you serious? That is took amazing. a picture with him. Thursday night? It was nuts. You got a you picture with him? Awesome. That man has the most epic mustache. <laughs> yeah. Also, I gotta point yes, out that was wasn't nuts. that wasn't like next to the convention center. No. That was like thirty Old minutes town. away. No, no, in ten, Old town. ten fi well, yeah. fifteen minutes outside yeah. of the con. Yeah. He's yeah. literally yeah. sitting on the patio. We're all walking by in our TNG That's uniforms, crazy. That's and amazing. his friend is like, "Excuse me, are you doing a show or a Star Trek?" And we're like, "Yeah." He's like, "They were like, he was Mart Martok." And we're like, oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I, I would know. have Comic lost Con. my we shit. We all were like trying to play it cool, like, oh, is this what, can we take a piss? Oh, oh my god, Gowron, oh Martok, and Rodek, those are seriously like the, with wow. the, so and, and I'm excluding of course Christopher Lloyd who did an amazing oh job in Star Trek, yes. in Star Trek 3. Um, uh, uh, I, I, those guys, those actors, I'm so blown away, that's amazing. Yeah, it was um, so magical. Uh, so the, uh, okay, so. So, so they're Star us. Trek Online now. Oh, they're they're doing VO in Star Trek Online. Um, two more announcements. 
Um, Star Trek Online, we are working with them to do a play along with you guys. Yes. We are trying to find out what day works best, but what we're going to do is anybody who can sign up for it, uh, we'll get you more details as they come out, but we're basically going to play Star Trek Online with you guys. So we're going to stage it. And we're going to do it. It's probably going to be on a weekend. We're going to get yeah. more details as it comes in. Um, but it's going to be rad. We're just going to we're going to game together, everybody. Anybody who can sign up for that. So we'll game send together. out. Yeah, game, game together. together. Oh, that's, a, that's an idea for a show. <laughs> um, so uh, so we'll give you more details as that's coming in. Um, last announcement before we begin tonight's game. I want to give a very happy birthday to my Star Trek crush, Nana Visitor. Happy birthday. <laughs> Yay! Uh, I've had a crush on you for so long. Kira uh, Reese. Kira Reese is an awesome character. I mm-hmm. love that character so much. And uh, yeah, it's her birthday. So I just saw a Kira centric episode. Yeah. Before. I was, saw, I, was I mean, that? I wanted to sit down and watch the episode with you, but I had to prep for the game. I was like, yeah. damn it, Hector's watching Star Trek. Also, you can't I, Star Trek, you have to Star Trek. I know, yeah. I know. That's true, right? Yo, Time dog, I heard you like Star Trek. It's all prep. <laughs> I gotta go do Star Trek. It's all prep. Also, <laughs> I wanna do some Star Trek. Yo, dog. Can I just say, uh, I didn't get a chance to go see Bonnie's show at Comic Con, but she said she had a great Ooh. improv set. Which was fantastic. Great oh, improv. We no, we're not improv. improv. No, 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 musical. musical. I mean, right. we improv all the songs. No, no, no. Yeah. You're a genius. I, I am. Oh my god. Finally. No, it, I, I mean, we, entirely we well. unrelated. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I wanted to, uh, as somebody who was in the audience for Elisa's show and her troupe, they were phenomenal. They blew me away. I was such so a great sad set. I had to miss such that. Such a great set. Yeah. So That's great fantastic. shows happening at Comic Con, uh, and uh, yeah, it was great. That's Got awesome. Talented people. All right. I think unless Sam has an announcement to make. Oh, do you, do you have an was I supposed to have an announcement? I don't know. I feel like I mean I have some, but it's not that important. <laughs> if you guys are free tomorrow night in Monrovia, we're doing a show. <clears throat> <laughs> in our concert, Monrovia, Library Bar's Monrovia, doing a show in Monrovia, Monrovia tomorrow Monrovia night. Public Library, and I'll be oh, here for Gather yeah. a Party on Friday too. So tune in. Awesome. Sweet. We're gonna do a couple songs for that too. All That's right. amazing. Yeah. I'm excited. That was my announcement. That's what I, I think. I think uh, that. You're doing. I'm excited too. Sam is we're excited. We're doing Gather a Party together. Um, I will be coming because I hear that. Talison is shaving Erica's head, head, head. undercut. Yep. And I said, oh, I'm yeah. oh, an undercut That's before happening. I went. Oh, Tune in cut. to watch Talison shave Erica's Go watch Erica that Ishii's on head. Gather Your Party <gasps> on Friday. Uh, I might haircut. actually stay up late. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, speaking of staying up late, we're going to go ahead and jump into the episode. Because, there we go. Yeah, uh, yeah. It will be. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a late one. So um, we'll try to keep track of that. But. Uh, you have, do you have an announcement? No, 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 I'm counting. Oh, okay. Because that was adorable. Ah, I, have, okay. I have one Can quick additional one, I'm so sorry. That's okay, fire it, away. It's um, The Improvised Generation, we're doing uh, Sundays in August, 7.30 p.m. at Impro Studio, The Lost Episodes. Ooh. Oh, right on, mm-hmm. okay, cool. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you more about it next time, okay. what that means. very good. But, uh, All right, so yeah. I think we're ready to go then? Yeah. All right, in that case, let's go ahead and start tonight's episode of Shield of Tomorrow. And welcome back, Boom. everybody. Oh, what's that? <laughs> Boom. Wow. Yeah. 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 Uh, quick, I want to do some quick shout outs before we get into the game for that, that intro, which was so much fun to shoot. Um, I want to give a shout out to Anovos, who again supplied us with all these rad uniforms, um, of which I am not wearing tonight because one of the, it's in the dry cleaners, but I'm representing Quark, so nice. I ain't. Uh, so quick shout out to Novos. Thank you so much. These uniforms are fantastically awesome. Um, uh, another quick shout out to Leland Cox, who was the composer of the music on that intro. Mind-blowingly rad. Leland is also on our plaque uh, for the USS Sally Ride. Um, and I also have here uh, a shout out to 
It looks like his name is Sax Carr. Mm -hmm. I, I guess uh, giving him a shout out because I guess he directed that. Oh, I've never heard so, of him. Sounds no. like a fake name, Eric. I don't know. Yeah. Move along. Sounds like fake that's news. A, that's that's a, a, sounds like a jazz on. player's name. <laughs> trolling you. It's not a real name. <laughs> nah. So yeah, Those so thank nouns. you, thank you to everyone who <laughs> contributed and made that rad intro. Can I just say a sh thank you to the people who did the makeup, uh, yeah. specifically Kaylin Ashley, who did a lot of the special effects makeup, especially yes. on Amy yes. and myself. Who, like she sculpted that nose onto my face. That was crazy. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> when you put it I, that way, I think she did your ears as <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she did. So, also, um, I mean, and in closing, yeah. I just want to give a shout out to Sam. A lot of people will not know this looking at that intro, but Sam had to do full body press in those crutches, to s mm. like beast mode engaged. Full mm. body press holding themselves for 20 seconds. Awesome. I could never survive that, so rad. Obviously Woo. nerd strong, paying off. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Damn. Um, mm. All right, guys. Well, then that's it. We're done with our intros, and our oh, announcements. Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. <laughs> and Kate um, Freelander. We're gonna go ahead and jump I mean, into hey, our. If we episodes. ended there. I'd be happy. That was so good. I love that so much. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and jump into the episode then tonight. Tonight's episode, which will be a multiple parter, I'm sure, as they all are, is called "I Remember." I thought it would be the push. The, <laughs> ah, ah, I see what you did there. Um, so. I remember. It's been two weeks since your mission that took you to Citrian 7, where the events took place there. The, the general, if you all remember correctly, uh, who you captured or who surrendered to you upon the evacuation of the planet of Citrian 7 before the moon crashed into it, he has been arrested by the Zakdorn government and is being held as a cr uh, criminal of the Zakdorn government Good. and is going to be tried in a, a federation court. That's been the update on that. Um, all of the mercenaries or soldiers under his command too are also being tried under court of law. So that has been taken care of. Um, well, I'm sure General Hotal will meet justice. Oh uh, yeah, He's, uh, he does not have a very happy career in front of him. Probably a small oh. cell with a, uh, a, a replicator unit and uh, a toilet. Oh. We wish you well, General. Um, so, <laughs> Amy's like, I'm doing the math on that. Um, so, um, it's been two weeks since those events took place. Things have been relatively quiet since then. Um, there, has no been, there hasn't been, with such a, an incredible celestial event taking place as planets being pulled out of alignment and moons crashing into planets, there's been very little uh, celestial occurrences, nothing unusual coming through. And I would imagine Talon specifically was probably keeping track of a lot of the reports that were coming in from ships as you were all stationed here on Deep Space Five waiting for the overhaul to f be finished up. Um, nothing unusual coming through the scientific channels across the, the fleet. Um, what has come through is that recently the Klingon Empire has made aggressive moves into Cardassian space. And what has been slowly coming down the wires as rumors have begun to spread throughout the fleet and you have all become aware, this has become common knowledge at this point. The Klingons engaged in battle at Deep Space Nine after Benjamin Sisko, the captain there, um, basically, to, to, to put a long story short, what you have gleaned from the, in, the intel reports that have been coming down the Cardassian government seems to have been tipped off or found out about the invasion of Cardassia, and there was a response from the Klingon Empire. Mm -hmm. Klingon ships, as of now, are to be treated with the utmost caution. It is now standard, it's now standard procedure when encountering any Klingon vessels to go to yellow alert. Um, this has become an unfortunate side effect of the hostilities. Um, Chancellor Gowron himself has left a very threatening message to the Federation that he will not forget that the Federation sided against the Klingon Empire in battle. And it will not be forgiven either. Have the Klingons declared war on the Federation? There's been no declaration of war. Okay. But they are officially in conflict with Cardassia and have made some pretty devastating gains into Cardassian territory. However, now that the Cardassians have managed to recover, the lines have halted the Klingon advance. So I've had enough time to drill the crew specifically in Klingon battle tactics. 
Okay, yeah. The, there are, there's plenty of simulations. Plenty mm -hmm. of simulations. So as you all know, the Federation has a long history with the Klingon Empire. It's rather shocking to think that once again you have stepped back past the Kittermer Accords. <sighs> and uh, the Klingons are now... It's not, it wouldn't be accurate to call it a Cold War. Their, their focus is very much directed somewhere else right now. Um, the Klingons have also engaged, from what you have heard on the pipes, the Klingons have also engaged, in, from, well, let me put it this way, the High Council led by Chancellor Gowron, they all seem to be suffering from mass paranoia, especially because more and more information is coming out about the changeling threat. Mm. Um, what do we know about the Changeling threat? You know that they are called the Founders by the Dominion, and you know that they are capable of perfectly impersonating anybody. Um, the Federation, Federation intelligence has not been that vocal, even to its starship captains. Um, it's a little disconcerting. You guys have not actually received a lot of over-the-wire briefing about the Changeling threat. Um, because it's too early, it's too, they don't want to freak everybody out. Your instinct, Captain, tells you, um, and, and Rue, you as well, tactically speaking, mm -hmm. the lack of information that's coming through subspace might hint that maybe Starfleet Intelligence, maybe, might be a little paranoid too. Um, and, and their lack of communication with Starship Captains, it's, yeah. not, it's, not, it's not hurting morale, but it is starting to carry sort of a, it, it's gone on long enough where it's starting to make everybody get a little fidgety. We can read the tea leaves. Yes. What does Starfleet know about Deep Space Nine's resident changeling? What are they sharing that they know about him? Do we know his name? Do we yes. know that it's Yes, everybody Odo? knows Constable Odo. So yeah. everybody, know, like Constable Odo, mm -hmm. super famous in Starfleet, is being the one changeling in Starfleet. Yes, yeah. okay. and he Looking is definitely, right. um, yeah. there's not a lot of information coming through the wire on him right now, um, but. Um, yeah, because like Sam just said, not technically in Starfleet, but no, working he's, with Starfleet. Right. He's, he's technically yeah. a member of the, Maj he's technically a member of the Bajoran militia. That's mm -hmm. right. Um, okay. So he, um, but the Bajoran government has, uh, they have absolutely no intention of removing him from his position. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the second officer, DS9 herself, has sp spoken up and uh, the Federation has not contested that mm -hmm. at all. He has totally mm -hmm. stayed in his position. And in fact, there's probably many, you would figure, probably many who think that Constable Odo, especially after his line of service, he might actually be a, an excellent source to understand what it is y'all are all dealing with. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But this is all, like I said, this is all transmissions y'all are receiving across subspace through chatter, captains talking to captains, information, uh, intel reports coming down through Starfleet Command on a need-to-know basis. Um, right now, it seems like even though this, con this engagement happened with the Klingons, there hasn't been any further reports of Klingon hostility towards Federation starships or colonies. Again, it seems like the, the Klingons have dug in in Cardassian space and they've kind of directed their attention towards that. They're not moving the line forward though. That much Starfleet intelligence has communicated to the captains of the fleet. The Klingons seem to have halted their advance and have dug in. That's worse. That means they're preparing for a long war. Oh, definitely, definitely seems like they're gearing for a battle of attrition. Uh, and if not that, they're looking to just, it, it looks like they're playing the long game. Yeah. It's not good. Um, it's a shame. It's too bad. Yeah. It's, if, the Dominion, if the presence of the Dominion wasn't enough to get people on edge, this conflict with the Klingons has definitely made people paranoid and that battle is coming. Starfleet has maintained its cool, um, despite the fact the expulsion of the diplomats from Kronos, but um, for the most part, again, there hasn't been any outward hostility since the engagement at DS9. So the Sally Ride is just like many of the other starships uh, in the fleet have just been put on uh, notice. So wait, you just said that the ambassadors representing Starfleet were expelled from expelled Kronos from and Kronos, the yes, Klingon homeworld. Wow. Yeah, okay. the, all the Federation ambassadors have been expelled from Kronos. All the Klingon ambassadors left Earth. They have all left the Federation uh, command centers and okay. they've pulled, yeah. Galron basically, upon, when, when the Federation condemned the hostile actions against the Cardassians, uh, it took about 24 hours before Galron uh, 
Ooh. basically broke the Kittimer Accord and co recalled all of the ambassadors and expelled the Federation ambassadors. But he was swift. But Starfleet's fa famous Klingon officer, Lieutenant Commander Worf. Who is now stationed is on Deep stationed, Space Nine. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That would, be, that would be information you would totally know. Mm -hmm. you, you, that's information you could easily look up. But it, it appears that uh, Commander Sisko, or rather, I think he's captain by now, yes. um, has specifically requested Worf to stay on board the, and basically made a, crew, a permanent crew transfer there. Yeah. Great. And probably played a seminal role in keeping the Klingons from taking DS9 that day. Mm. Great episode. Way of the Warrior Part 1 and 2. It's one of my favorite DS9 episodes. I don't know this information. So fantastic. Oh, just kidding. It's okay, you're an ensign, dear. Ensign Lark is, <laughs> oh, no. ensign Lark yeah, is committed to go watch Netflix. Dark. I'm like, why is everyone talking? <laughs> Um, for you all, though, nice. Deep Space Five is far, far away from DS9. You guys are quite a bit ways away. Um, the Sally Ride has been undergoing a big overhaul to her weapon systems. Her <laughs> phasers have been upgraded with increased accuracy. She has been refitted with the next mark of photon torpedoes. Um, you have, at this point, I would say, uh, Captain, you have heard that Starfleet has completed uh, trials on the new quantum torpedoes. They are supposed to be high yield, very lethal uh, torpedoes that are going to re eventually replace the photon torpedoes. But right now there's a limited supply coming out of Starfleet and they're headed mostly towards the Sovereign class vessels, which have yet to launch off the line, but are, are coming down the line. Okay. It's not you, a huge loss. I'm not a fan of the quantum torpedoes anyway, yeah. to be perfectly <laughs> honest with you. Yeah. Um, the Sovereign class, by the way, which is becoming more and more common knowledge to the fleet, Sovereign class is going to be the largest, most advanced starship that the Federation has ever built. Um, <laughs> Lark is like, I like this. I, want, I, I, I like fast, Intrepid. Yeah. Can I drive that one? Huh? Ours is faster. <laughs> I know. Ours is Much faster. faster. Yeah, I know. More ours is faster. Agile. And that's all, that's she can all I care about. She can see things that Sovereign class can't see. Mm -hmm. um, Ooh, fine sounds fine. I like the psychic ship. <laughs> the psychic ship. <laughs> the psychic ship. So it's been... <laughs> so we get phasers, Sorry. we get quantum torpedoes. Um, I think I heard something about shields. <laughs> What's that? Um, in yeah, the initial order. Shields upgrades as well? No shield what upgrades. Other? So you well, said sensors, photon, torpedoes. The, the, the upgrades have been to the weapon systems on the Sally oh, Ride. Not systems. sensors? And yeah. not quantum torpedoes, not yet, right? Not yet. Okay. You guys have gotten the latest mark of torpedoes? That one. Mm -hmm. um, that, but yeah, quantum torpedoes, which have been finished, they finished their trial runs and they are now being loaded onto the more advanced ships, but they have not been put into the field just yet. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But there's a lot of people talking at, you've heard some chat, anybody who has been watching some of the reports coming out of like Utopia Planitia and some of the other shipyards have talked about some of the weapons tests that they've conducted with the quantum torpedoes and these torpedoes, they are devastating weapons. Hopefully the Federation will never have to use them. It's kind of the general attitude towards it. Yeah, hopefully they will. They're, 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 yeah. Mm. yeah. But I mean, again, these quantum torpedoes have been in development since the Borg made their appearance known. So this is the next line of weaponry to come down in case, and, and now it just seems like, here's the Dominion. So again, it's, it's another, it's another, it's another signifier, Captain, that Starfleet's priorities and their resources have shifted. Yeah, it's shifting, yeah. A little bit? No. A it's lot of weapon research a, going on right sad, now. a little sad, honestly. A lot of weapon research, a lot of shield technology research, a lot of, yeah, a lot of upgrades to warships. The Arakira mm -hmm. class has been put into, again, Steam Runner, they've all been coming into production, and the Defiant class is also in production. All right. Two weeks now on Deep Space Five. With all of this news coming into the pipe, you're finally getting close to leaving. You're about a day away from Sally Ride's departure. You have been given orders, Captain. Um, a fairly tame sounding mission compared to the last one. Um, the Sally Ride is going to be ordered to Ivar Three, which is an isolated colony. Um, as soon as medical supplies are loaded up to transport two passengers. Um, considered very important people, VIPs, to be transport. Well, one of them is to be taken to the colony itself. The other one, you will rendezvous um, in flight with the Cura, Cura I'm sorry, Curio, 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 I can't pronounce it. <laughs> like Jack Curio. Uh, yes, thank you. I can, if I say his name, yeah. I can say Curio, but if I try to read it off, like Curio. <laughs> um, 
so um, the Kerouac, Kerouac <laughs> which is the, uh, it's a civilian transport operating under the flag of the Federation. Okay. Um, you were to rendezvous there and do a quick exchange of passengers as well. So you're basically going to a colony, making a stop mid-transit, and then proceeding to the colony. You said exchange passengers, so the second VIP that we'll be dropping off at the Kerouac, will we be getting another passenger on board? That's correct. Okay. It's going to be a personnel exchange okay. and uh, people going to this colony. Got it. So it's, it's, it's not unusual to sort of juggle personnel like this. Mm -hmm. uh, the galaxy's a pretty big place and it takes a long time to get certain places. So you guys are going to be in warp for a spell. So yeah. um, basically there's a leapfrogging taking place here. Okay. But rendezvousing with the Kerouac, you're going to be able to do the personnel exchange. All right. Uh, so you're to pick up two personnel officers here that are going to be uh, joining up with the USS Sally Ride for this mission, along with a cache of medical supplies that is coming with you for this colony. Great. And the colony, again, is Ivar 3. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where we begin on Deep Space 5 <laughs> after all of that. <laughs> we begin on Deep Space 5. We're going to start off in the bar, the bar area at Deep Space 5. Um, How convenient. Yes, indeed. Um, wrapping up um, what has been kind of a relaxing stay, despite the fact that all of this is happening in the galaxy. You have all basically had some downtime uh, for the past two weeks to stay sharp, to do some refits on the, on the ship, but also to sort of get a feel of what's going on in the rest of the galaxy and once again sort of get to know each other a little bit more. Um, not that that's been too much of a problem as you're well into a year of your mission with each other, um, but uh, once again having some downtime, uh, it's been interesting. Um, we're going to start with Ensign Sage and Dr. Throlo stepping out of the bar uh, on the promenade here. Um, as you're all stepping out of the bar, uh, Sage, I'm just going to guess that you've had about three cream sodas at this point. Three Give or four. Give or take. Okay. Yeah. You're feeling quite bubbly at this point. I'm more than, more so than usual. Okay. Yeah. So as the, as the three, as the two of you walk out, you manage to see um, Talon approaching uh, from the promenade, walking towards you all. Um, uh, the imminent departure of the Sally ride has kind of spurned everybody again to sort of stretch their legs and walk around the station a few more times before uh, boarding up. Uh, which will be taking place tonight. Doctor, um, Ensign. Salon, can we interest you in a drink? Well, I have just enough time to take another stroll around the station and then another deep session of meditation. So, hydrated drink? meditation? <laughs> I suppose I could do two minutes less of meditation this time. Yes, I will join you for one beverage. A reasonable decision. Excellent. I didn't really want to leave anyway. You pivot and go right <laughs> back into the bar. <laughs> the three of you find yourselves a nice table. Um, as you're sitting down, you hear the very familiar heavy footsteps of a uh, Tellarite mm. as he comes stomping up uh, one of the stairwells leading up to the bar area. He walks over to you, lit from underneath. The Tellarite looks grumpier than usual as Jiv approaches all of y'all and without even asking, pulls up a stool and just sits down next to y'all and says, two weeks, I hate space stations. Only one more day to go. One more day. Yeah. Captain wouldn't let me stay on board the ship. Did you get some rest at least? I mean, that last mission was pretty intense. You did a lot of work. You got a little bit of rest, I guess, yeah. Oh, yeah. see? Worth it. Little I would bit. imagine that last mission took a toll on all of us, physical, mental, and spiritual. Actually, I thought it was great. <laughs> I, I had a great time, to be perfectly honest with you. I, you gotta remember, I was, I was coming from Starbase 138, and that place was, well, it was hell. It was a Targ's ass. I would never want to go back there again. Oh, I'm sorry, a what's ass? It's a Targ. It's like a big Klingon dog. Think of it like that. Ah, the Targ, yes. Yeah. It takes a long drink, sets it down. <coughs> so, uh, been in any good hollow sweets lately? <laughs> uh, not really, actually. Me either. You'd think I'd be able to come up with something fun. But no, I've actually just been, I've been enjoying uh, the people watching. It's, you know, once you get used to the crew on your own ship, 
It's kind of nice to see some unfamiliar faces around. Hey, can I ask you, can I ask you kind of a, I'm an old Tellarite. I've gotten pretty good at identifying when I'm being rude. So I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge that what I'm about to ask you might be a little invasive and you just tell me to shut up. But what's, uh, it's just that, you know, most Bajorans I see wearing the, the, the thing. earring. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, I was raised on Earth. I mean, my parents, my adopted parents anyway, didn't really want me to know much about Bajor or my actual family. I don't really know much at all, to say the least. And uh, I was found with an earring, but unfortunately, it's broken and there's no real reason for me to wear it. I wouldn't even know the reason to wear it. I didn't really study much about Bajor or Bajoran history or anything on earth. So I don't know, maybe it's something I should look into, but I have the earring. I just don't wear it. Yeah. It's cool. Don't, not rude at all. It's fine. I get it asked all the time and yeah. Starfleet especially every, every day practically. But, yeah, but, I don't, uh, I don't, I get asked all the time why my beard isn't like huge, you know, because yeah. everyone just assumes Tellarites grow this massive beard. But uh, I like to keep mine short because let me tell you, when you're an engineer, you want to keep it short. It's a fire hazard. It's all kinds of hazards. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I, I appreciate the practice, but. Mm. Well, uh, thanks for telling me that. I, no I, I, maybe, maybe I'll get it fixed and give it a shot one day. Who knows? And uh, since H, have you been to Bajor? No, no, I have not. I'm sure, I hear it's lovely. I mean, obviously, uh, it wasn't a place to go to <laughs> until recently, but uh, no, I have never been. Um, I'm sh sure it's interesting. Have, have you either been to Bajor? I have not been to Bajor. There's a, an awkward, let me put it this way. Talon is usually very, thorough in their responses. <laughs> even even uh, even Jiv just kind of looks at Talon like waiting for the rest of that sentence to come out and then says, okay, well, no, neither have I. Um, and at about that point. Lots um, of places we'd like to go. Yes. <laughs> yeah, lots of play and you hear the- That's you, why we're here. You also hear, again, another familiar sound um, of crutches <laughs> as Commander Rue just very gracefully makes their way right into the end of the area, just kind of sliding between a couple of people who like are holding up their drinks and like, Commander, excuse me, sorry. And they move past you. Um, you see your crewmates all sitting at a table. You haven't seen everyone gathered like this since your first meeting at Starbase One before the Sally Ride headed out of space dock. I can't imagine I would have run into them. Yeah. Oh. Is, that a, is that a, I missed a pun, did I miss a pun? No. Okay, just checking. I, 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 I gotta check with the puns with you sometimes, so I'm just like, cause, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but no, I mean, Drew has lots of things to do, not typically on the promenade. Yeah, it's true. Um, it's, it's the first time, I mean, past, the, here's the frustrating thing about Starbase 5, is it's one of the older Starbase designs. So a lot of the foot traffic coming through the bar area, a lot of it is getting around the crowds that don't fit through the tunnels on the promenade. So th this place has become a big traffic hub, especially with all the activity that's happening in the galaxy right now. So you've noticed that a lot of people, it's kind of like when you don't want to wait for the red light, so you cut through a parking lot and make that right turn kind of thing. It's kind of what people do. So Rue, as you're kind of moving through, that's when you catch your crewmate sitting at the table. And if you were trying to dodge them, it's difficult because Jiv spots you immediately. I would never attempt to dodge them in particular. I just have places to be most of the time. Okay. Um, right I now- I wave at them okay. <laughs> really enthusiastically. Commander, Jiv leans back. Did you want to maybe join us for a minute? We're talking about places we want to go. Not that we're ever going to get there, or at least not while we're on duty. <laughs> Certainly not while you're on duty. I'd be happy to join you for a time. He scoots his stool back. Right. You pull one up, sit down. So we were just asking invasive religious questions to our Bajoran friend here, who was being very graceful in answering them. It's fine. I'm actually... I don't really practice any religion, so it wasn't offensive to me at all. Neither do I. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Commander Wu, where would you like to go? Where I'm needed. Well, that sounds like a Starfleet answer. Have you ever been to Bajor? 
it hadn't really come up in the course of my duties, no. I've heard things about it. I've heard Bajor is one of the most beautiful planets in the Federation. Well, they're not Federation, but you know what I mean. I'm the allies of the Federation. In yeah. the quadrant? Quadrant. Yeah, I like that. Quadrant. That's what we normally say, isn't it? I mean, maybe, maybe we'll get to go. There's a lot of stuff happening around, you know? Maybe we could just... Maybe oh. we'll get some kind of mission there or something you're seeking. You know, just... I mean, it'd be interesting to learn more about Bajor and maybe, you know, see if, you know, th there could be anything there. Hey, you know. Really? Honestly, Ziv leans forward and he says, the Hollow Suites on board the Sally Ride, they could probably give you at least a glimpse. I mean, it's not like going there, but you could at least learn a thing or two if you're really hungering. True. But I'm kind of the type of person that I would rather wait and see it in person and let it be a surprise. I appreciate that, yeah. Juan, any interesting scientific phenomena in the region? In this region? Ah, the one around Bajor. Well, there <laughs> is something very wonderful there. Huh. I wonder if a science vessel would ever have a call to explore it. I should certainly hope so. The wormhole is, one might say, a miracle of science if one could use such a, <laughs> such an oxymoron. <laughs> does seem to fall right into that interest in astrophysics you have, doesn't it? Yes. Hmm. Well. Yes, and its impact on the Bajoran people's culture and evolution is extraordinary. Oh, yeah, xenoarchaeology as well, wasn't it? Yes, stellar anthropology. Ah, there Stellar we environmental anthropology, to be precise. Well, that's quite perfect, isn't it? The way a cosmic phenomenon would impact a culture. Exactly, it was my... It was my specialty back in school. If a trip there were made for you. Well, I mean, not to be doom and gloom, but it is probably the most strategic hotspot in the galaxy at this point, right? Huh. I mean, it's literally the only corridor the Dominion can use. When he says that, he stops for a second, just looks around and says, you know, the only corridor that they can use to come into the Alpha Quadrant. Or is it the Beta Quadrant? Where is Deep Space Nine again? Alpha. Beta. I think it's Beta. I believe <laughs> it is the Beta Quadrant, but I'm sure someone will let us know that. <laughs> <laughs> I spent a lot. We were like, "What quadrant are we in?" No, <laughs> it's the Beta going? Quadrant for anybody. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure um, we're there. <laughs> like, man, we're horrible stars. Is it Alpha? <laughs> pretty sure. Isn't yeah, it? I, I, could have, I could have sworn. Well, then I'm also Voyager's going. Voyager's in the Delta the deep, Quadrant. Deep Space okay. Nine is in the Beta I Quadrant it's with Beta. Yeah. yeah. And then the the um, wormhole, and the wormhole is right. Yeah. Oh boy. The Gamma Quadrant. Yeah. Gamma. It does go to the Gamma Quadrant. That is. Yeah. That I'm almost sure it's Beta maps. Quadrant. We have maps. I'm sure chat is exploding right yeah, now. Yeah, they're like, yeah, that's that's everything everything know that. Track, <laughs> We're going to get We're going to get track checked, yeah. Oh, sure. Track -checked. Well, <laughs> we are by necessity because we have people saying one thing. I'm down with it. Track check us. Tell yeah. us. Yeah. Um, I'm almost certain Tell it's beta. Tell us wrong. The um, more you know, we'll spread check it out. the knowledge. Um, in any case, um, if ever we do get a chance to be in that go. area, it would be wonderful to see. I don't really think I have anything there for me, but it'd be nice to kind of see... You never what know. could have been? Yeah, hmm. yeah. That's fine. What's there is what you make of it. Um, True. I don't think my parents would approve very much, though. The yeah. sages were never big on letting me learn anything about Bajoran anything. You're really. a grown woman, Sage. You make your own decisions, except where they would oppose mine. Then you do not <laughs> make your own decisions. So. <laughs> Oops, space nine. It's just alpha. So it's an alpha, actually. Deep Space Nine is an alpha quadrant. Oh. Mm. Our Vulcan is track checking us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's um, you You're not related to uh, oh. Caroline or Kirby Sage, are you? Those are my parents. Those yes. are your parents? Yes, those are my parents. I figured the Sage would have given it away, but... No kidding. Yeah, remember that whole big old press thing they did if years back yeah with the whole adopting a that was alien. you that was me i'm the alien. oh my goodness you ziv leans back in his chair and he says oh wow yeah that was broadcast all over the federation space i, I 
Yep, well, yeah, I like, see uh, reruns of it all the time. Wow. First contact day. They thought it'd be fun to adopt me on that day. So I guess that I don't know when my real birthday is, but that technically is when we celebrate it. Yeah, your Birthdays parents. Birthdays are uh, a fun tradition. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, sharing it, my birthday with first contact day is not as fun because, I mean, everyone would get out of school, so that was nice, <laughs> but no um, one would actually show up to my party because they had other things going on. Um, I'm going to say at this point, um, uh, the, awkward. you guys are very awkward moments. You guys are noticing, um, um, as you're having this conversation, you're noticing a lot of the auxiliary crew. Um, of the Sally Ride, um, nodding to y'all as they're moving back towards the ship. Um, a lot of the uh, the lower decks crews, um, everyone's kind of, it, it looks like everyone's packed up and there's re, they're basically boarding the Sally Ride for mm. departure, um, for tomorrow's departure. Um, moving through the crowd, you see a few of them make way as you see Captain Martinez sort of nodding to a few of them and talking to the lower deck uh, ensigns um, moving past. Uh, Captain, as you're sort of looking at your crew there's moving past you, you do notice that your senior staff is up in the bar area about 100 feet away. Please come um, save me. <laughs> this is getting really awkward. <laughs> and Jiv raises a, a mug to you and uh, kind of waves you over. Great, I make my way over there. All right, you step through. A uh, bunch of the uh, staff, lieutenants and lieutenant commanders kind of stop and let you move past. Um, as you approach, as you step up into the promenade, a lot of the on-duty officers stand at attention as you walk past them. Um, and as you approach the table, Shiv at stands ease. up. At ease. At ease, Shiv. Thank you, sir. He sits back down. Captain, will you need me to monitor onboarding? Uh, no, I think everybody's got everything under control, Rue. Thank you. Um, yeah. You yeah. have a data pad with you, by the way, with the orders. Yeah. You received. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Just, you're carrying that. I mean, you just received your orders, basically. I just I received like. the orders yeah. that we were heading to Ivar 3? Mm hmm That'll okay, be your great. destination tomorrow. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, we'll be going over our orders shortly, but I just received them, so we have a mission. Everybody. Where are we off to? Heading off to Ivar 3. Well, Never heard no of it. There's no Bajor, but you know. Maybe Why, next were, we, time. were we just talking about Bajor before I just arrived? Just a little bit. Oh, we were just talking about places we'd like to see, and that one definitely ah. is on the list. Yeah. I've seen, uh, seen holla images of the wormhole. It's pretty amazing. Never seen a wormhole look like that before. I mean, theoretical wormholes obviously existing, mm. but... Never seen anything like that. It's pretty miraculous, right? Yeah, what do the Bajorans call it? Uh, the, the Temple of something, uh, something or other? You know what, actually, I don't. Celestial. Prophets. No. We'd have to refer to the stellar yeah. environmental anthropologist yeah. on that one. I just know that it's a stable wormhole and it could change everything. Already has. Incredible. Yeah. Well, Already Captain, has. with your permission, I have followed your orders and stayed off the Sally ride and gotten downtime as you have ordered. Thank you. With your permission, I'd really like to get back into the engine room. All right, permission granted. I see you trimmed the beard too, it looks good. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, taking some getting used to. I'm used to feeling this rubbing against the uniform. Yeah, well, it suits you. So, I guess we'll see you on board? Yeah, I'll see you on board. All right, thank you, Lieutenant Commander. Do you want to start mocking up a briefing on the power requirements of those new weapons? Might get you some time in the engine room, Jeff. I'll take that, yeah. I'd like to get to know some of the new phaser output. You know, the energy I. output for the phasers, I, I need to know if they've changed or not. Those engineers haven't been too kind letting me see exactly what there is they're doing. You let me know everything you know as you find it out. Yes, sir. All right, get out here. Gets up, downs the rest of his drink, sets it down, and stomps off. You know, before things get a little uh, personal on the ship, how is everyone's shore leave? Is that the professional question or the personal? Per personal. Did I say before things get personal? I meant professional. Mm -hmm. oh. Before things get <laughs> a little <laughs> professional on the ship, I figured I'd take this opportunity to ask a lax question if I could. How's everyone's uh, two weeks been? It was nice. Actually, uh, Commander Rue has been uh, training me on some actual combat scenarios. I'm not very good yet, Captain, but I'm getting better. After that incident on, uh, what was it? Symmetry and Seven. 
I felt like I needed to work a little bit on my comments. Right. Things got pretty heavy. Yeah. Yeah, I might have like hit a wall or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you performed admirably, and considering you're not covered in bruises, I would imagine then that uh, Rue. Has been taking it a little there easy on you. There were a few bruises. I have a doctor <laughs> right. thing for that, Captain. No, no, there were a few bruises. Good, I'm glad. I'm yeah, glad. If there's Your no bruises, you don't know the pattern intact. works. Exactly. You do keep me busy. <laughs> exactly. Um, Great. Try to stay out. So we'll go ahead, if you are ready, we'll go ahead and cut to our departure time. Mm -hmm. I'm not ready yet. Not ready yet? Mm -mm. Fire away. Doctor, how have your breaks been? How's your break been? <laughs> 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 Delicious. Out of curiosity, are you drinking a cream soda along with the ensign? Yes, today <laughs> I am. Great. Very nice. You seem in high spirits. That's great. Uh, Talon, Mix has it your break something. been stimulating as you would hope? Actually, it was quite the opposite. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> no, Captain, I was seeking some rest and recovery after okay. the excitement of what happened in the Citrian system. Did you find that rest and relaxation? I believe I did. I have been trying a new type of meditation called Kithera. It is meant to help balance and e bring equilibrium to guard against the emotions of others. It's fantastic. I also have to ask, uh, how's, um, how's the studying of human uh, humor been going? I know that you've been taking some classes or something. Are you working on a stand-up comedy routine? Is that I right? would love to see that. Well, at your request, I did look into that, but that did not hold my attention. <sighs> really? Darn. Yes. I would have also loved to have seen that. <laughs> That's too bad. Well, we'll have to send you some, uh, some classic Earth material. Uh, Gallagher. Captain, I'm not sure if that is wise because... <laughs> did I just hear a crewman whisper Gallagher? That's weird. <laughs> I'm not familiar with that, I uh, with a Gallagher. I'll have to look that up later in the, on Who the wants to see ship's computer. computer. We've discussed the or mental health benefits of performance. Committee. <laughs> okay, that's great. That's good. See, mental health benefits. See, that's helpful. I understand your concern for my mental health, but sure. as a Vulcan, I believe that meditation is a more productive right. use of my time. Of course, of course, of course, of course. And after my impulsive actions on in that research base, I prefer not to consume any more emotional or lively things. You mean your darn quick thinking? It was impulsive, and it was not logical to nerve pinch someone with two phasers at hand. But oh, it, it worked. Was, it was glorious, Talon. It was, it was as, uh, as humans would say, it was awesome. So, I do not strive for awesome. I strive for logical and safe. Well, you do that as well. You do that as well. Commander Rue, how has your break been? The drilling of the crew has been incredibly productive, and the weapons refits have gone on schedule, which for any star base is a minor miracle. That's true. That's true. What about uh, any uh, personal endeavors? Have you found any rest and relaxation? Any extracurricular activities? Any hobbies? Anything to keep you entertained? Always, sir. I have engaged in quite a few sparring sessions I found to be incredibly productive. Oh, here, here on the base? Of course. Oh, fantastic. I hope you kept them alive. Sir? <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke, Commander Rue. It's a joke. I understood. Okay, great. Mm. Uh, maybe I should brush up on some of that comedic, <laughs> <laughs> comedic lessons as well, probably. Uh, I feel like I'm not doing a good enough job representing Earth comedy right now. Um, <laughs> I will research and get back to everybody. We should probably all do a little research. Yeah. I, I know ventriloquism. That's not a useful skill at all. Ventriloquism. And mm -hmm. not in comedy, anyway. <laughs> it's not funny at all. It may yet have its moment. Mm. Is it meant to be funny? Ventrilo ventriloquism. No, it's just it creepy. It can be. Or, or, sure, creepy. Yeah, I've seen some old uh, hollow videos. That's the only some... reason why I learned it, because I wanted to prank my parents. Mm. I would hide and throw my voice <laughs> around That's the room. That's a good prank. That's a good prank. And they wouldn't know where I was hiding. It would have come in handy in the caves. Yeah. It sounds like a very useful skill. And also off-putting, <laughs> perhaps, <laughs> for a Bajoran or a human, I can imagine. Captain, how was your break? <laughs> oh, uh, it was great. I did some reading, um, brushed up on some, uh, on some Starfleet material, anything that might help, just to, you know, 
keep abreast of everything that's happening right now. So it was good. It was great. You read the news for two weeks. Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think maybe I was uh, getting a little, a little, a little bit of cabin fever. Perhaps I'm ready to head back out there. Maybe huh? sooner than I thought I was. So. What's Ivar three like? Let's go find out. All right, now I'm ready. We can cut to hey. the scene. Uh, <laughs> nice. I just, I just want to say as nice we get segue. up after that crazy conversation about like Bajor and like all that other stuff, uh, as I get up, I slowly reach down to my ankle and just kind of pull my pants leg down a little bit and get up. Okay. I'm self-conscious about it. Okay. And I notice. So I notice that movement. <laughs> um. On our, Rube? On our way out, I do want to catch Talon by the elbow. I'm sorry you were put in a position where in that moment violence seemed like the most logical choice. If you wanted to, if you would benefit from discussing it in order to better structure your meditations, I'm available to you. Thank you, Commander. All right, let's go. Okay. 24 hours later, the Sally Ride is clearing all moorings and maneuvering thrusters away from Starbase uh, DS-5, uh, rather. Easy. Um, as uh, you watch the view screen as you will back basically pull away from the Starbase, um, leaving the, the docking bay doors and pulling out uh, and seeing the great empty expanse of deep space in front of you as the ride is once again in her element where she belongs among the stars away from dock out to see everything that's waiting for you out there um you hear from the transport room that all of the passengers the two vips are safely aboard and are being escorted to uh the uh observation lounge and uh, you also have received report from Jiv that the weapon systems are not only in place, but it looks like the Starfleet engineers who installed the upgrades already ran the weapon tests and, found, and he's found that they're fully calibrated and ready to be used immediately. Great. We're upgrading uh, that's that minor not, miracle. That's not typical for Starfleet. Usually you do that in transit. Um, Jiv is like, they gave us the five star treatment, Captain. They. It's good to hear. Yeah. Hmm. Um, Great to hear. All right. Okay, so, so we're on our way. Um, you plot a course. Go ahead and... Course is plotted. Um, typically, um, I'm just gonna keep track of this now. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and say one energy is spent from the Sally Ride. If you wanna make the roll though, because I believe Sally Ride regenerates she does. Mm -hmm. power. Yeah. Do I, am um, I rolling? Because I'm going into work. I don't really, this is just what I do, right? It's not a combat plot. Yeah, it's not a combat plot. I'm just going bloop, bloop, bloop. Okay, yeah. nope. Nope. Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry, that's an effect die, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I so go ahead and... Uh, still no. Still no, okay, cool. So the Sally Ride subtract one energy from her yep. pool as Marking. she goes into warp. Fantastic. Not gonna probably big, too much of a big deal, but you, you never see? know what happens, so we'll just keep track of that. Sally Ride will regenerate that energy, here. no problem. Um, you guys launch into warp. Um, after entering into warp, you uh, receive notification uh, you received notification, Captain Martinez, that the VIPs have arrived in your uh, observation lounge and are ready Great. to meet you. I will go and greet them. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, who's coming with you? Is it senior staff? Is it just you? Who's coming with? Well, what do I know about these VIPs before? Just that one of them is an ambassador and another okay. one is a high-ranking uh, commercial, uh, like a, uh, a merchant, essentially, who has helped supply these medical supplies for okay. the Federation. All right, you know what? I'm gonna have um, Commander Rue and Lieutenant Commander Talon accompany me. Okay. And we three will go and greet the ambassador and whoever the other person was you, you said. Okay. Once we get the bridge. Stepping into the observation, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. Stepping into the observation Wait, lounge. Wait, who do I leave in charge of the bridge for a second? Who do I, is it Ensign Sage? Uh, I mean, yeah. No. Ensign Sage is not the ranking officer, no. so Ensign right. Sage will not be left in command of the ranks. Throw a, okay, Finally. great. Finally, <laughs> One of the auxiliary crew members <laughs> takes center chair for you, one of yeah, the lieutenant commanders. And I'll um, say, like, Doctor, you have the bridge. 
Um, <laughs> so you moving in uh, to the observation lounge. Yeah. Um, stepping into the observation lounge, as the door opens, you see, of course, this observation lounge is a nice, comfortable area with the beautiful star field outside. Um, Again, going to warp is always something beautiful to see outside your window. Um, sitting in the chairs across the table, you see, first of all, a Ferengi. Oh. oh and great. And some pretty decadent looking robes mm -hmm. um, and tunic with pants. Uh, of course, completely done up in the way the Ferengi are, the headdress and everything. Um, he is in conversation with a very, very familiar looking man. Um, in fact, it hits you immediately, Talon. This is Ambassador Nidus Rell, the Betazoid who you met on Starbase 138. Oh. Mm -hmm. Who was antsy and wanting to get the hell out of there. He succeeded. He Ambassador seems, Rell. Oh. Yeah, he seems to have succeeded. You say Ambassador Rell. As you step in, he turns and looks at you and says, Talon! Uh, I mean, uh, Lieutenant Commander Talon. <laughs> it's uh, agreeable to see you again. Yes, for me as well. Um, the Ferengi looks at him and says, Agreeable? What sort of strange language is that, agreeable? It is good to see you again. Say good. It is good to see you again. <laughs> oh, hello. He steps forward. This is an Earth custom, isn't it? Uh, I'm Clack. Yes, it is. Clack. Welcome aboard. Thank I you, would, Captain. I would agree with you that it is good to make your acquaintance. Thank you so much. Welcome aboard the USS Sally Ride. Apologies for not being able to greet you in the transporter room. We had oh. business on the bridge, as you can imagine, but thankfully you're here, you're safe, and we have quarters prepped and ready for you for your VIP status. Ah, so. yes. I'm excited to see my quarters, Captain. I've never been on board a intrepid-class starship before. I've heard many things. Uh, tell me, what warp are we at right now? Uh, I believe warp seven? And how fast can the ship go? Why don't I set you up with a tour? That would be with, excellent. I have, a, I have a chief engineer who would absolutely love to give you a tour of the entire ship and answer all of your questions. Oh, thank you, Captain. Yes. Um, I also have some very precious cargo that I've brought with me. I've seen to it that your ensigns and your personnel have kept it in your cargo bay. All the medical supplies are accounted for. Great. Best not to disturb them, though, while they're there. It, nothing particular why. Run your scans if you need to. It's just I've been as successful Ferengi as I have been because I'm very, very meticulous mm. about my transfer of cargo. But I, of course, will cooperate in any way necessary should you feel the need to search the cargo or whatever it is you need to feel comfortable. Certainly. Well, I'm sure that we have a standard protocol for that sort of thing, and we can set up a standard issue search and, and uh, declaration of whatever it is you have on board. And Excellent. And we'll make sure that that's all taken care of and squared away and going through the proper channels. So Great. Great. Yeah. I'm very excited, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the engineering. Engineering, yes. I would like to see that. Yeah, sure. Uh, of course. Captain to Chief Engineer, Jiv. This is Jiv, Captain. How can I do for you? Jiv, can you meet me in the, uh, uh, the, uh, whatever room we're in right now? That, uh, <laughs> observation, observation room. The observation <laughs> room. There's yeah, a lot of terminology you. that you know when you watch Star Trek, but when you're playing it, you're like scrolling through all of these Absolutely. names. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm just so distracted by the beautiful stars. Did you look at that? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Look at how beautiful they are. Look at that. Look at it's, that. it's Sage is doing the distraction the, dance. The just calm right before the storm, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the observation <laughs> room. <laughs> so, <laughs> if, you can, if you could head up here uh, <laughs> as soon as possible. Uh, Roger that, Captain. On my way up now. Thank you. Right. Um, oh, so I should wait here then. Excellent. Fantastic. Can we get you any sort of a, a, a beverage or any kind of a. Yes. I've always wanted to try a Rock Tacino. I've heard it's. Different. Sure, I'm sure that we can get somebody to get you one of those, right, Commander, probably? Yes, there's yeah. a replicator right there in the conference room. There we oh, go. You are a trill, are you not, Commander? May, yes. I, may I ask how old you are? I hear trills live an awfully long time. They do. Fascinating, fascinating. You know what else you might find really enjoyable is a cream soda. They come highly recommended from our Helmsman, if you wanted to try one of those out as well. Cream soda. Yes, soda. Absolutely. Perfect pronunciation. Really very, impressive. Very well. I shall have a cream soda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one of us. Um, one of us. Uh, he, 
<laughs> as this is happening, you see, <laughs> as he, he's getting ready to open his mouth again, he says, well, I'm, uh, I'm sure you, the captain has a lot of pressing matters there, uh, Kalak. I'm, I'm sure that we don't want to bog him down with questions. Perhaps we can just sit here and wait quietly for the engineer to come and uh, give you that tour. And the Ferengi, oblivious to the social cue, just says, uh, yes, uh, would you like to sit with us? I have so many more questions. Unfortunately, we have some pressing matters on the bridge, as you can imagine. Um, but uh, Ambassador Rell, do you have everything that you need? Uh, yes, I'm. I'm quite uh, well off. I'm looking forward to seeing my quarters as well. Uh, it was. Uh, I'm very grateful to be away from the starbase, <laughs> Captain, as you might imagine. And remind uh, me, how do you and Lieutenant Commander Talon know each other? I had the great pleasure of speaking with the Lieutenant Commander while we were uh, on Starbase 138. Uh, she stopped by to look at some of the archives that we had at what could be charitably described as the embassy. <laughs> Ambassador Rell has a very thorough archive of Bajoran ships and ships of other historic battles. Oh, I great. am admittedly deeply fascinated with historical, well, naval history, Captain, mm. <laughs> of all planetary worlds, as many as that I can get my hands on. Earth is very fascinating. Uh, there's not too, many, not too many species out there that would... The Vikings, I believe they're called? Oh, yes. How yes. they managed to sail on those... Quite a feat. Yes. I'm something of a... Uh, I like to consider myself something of a historian as well. And uh, I lean in and I go, do you... Uh, tell me, do you have a, do you have a favorite ship? Uh, a, a favorite Earth ship? Of any planet any culture. To be honest, it kind of varies, Captain. I, I, I can't seem to pick a favorite, but <laughs> not to sound like I'm trying to curry favor, Captain, but honestly, I am incredibly fascinated with the flight of the Phoenix. I've mm -hmm. been reading up on it a lot lately. It's pretty incredible. Our first contact wasn't quite so uh, dramatic <laughs> as the human's first contact. Yeah, absolutely. That's Ephraim Cochran's a real hero to uh, Pretty extraordinary individual, yes, sir. Yeah. I would agree. <laughs> uh, good. Well, good answer. That's great. Well, <laughs> we should probably head to the bridge. Uh, we'll be sure to have some, um, some crew members escort you to your quarters. If there's anything else, please feel free to find me in my personal quarters, uh, reach any personnel that will be able to contact me. Um, our ship is at your leisure, I guess, whatever it is that you need. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Captain. I appreciate that. Thank you. Great. Um, Lieutenant Kim, Commander Talon, uh, if you are off duty, maybe later on, and would like to perhaps meet me in the galley for some more discussion about uh, Bajoran ships, uh, I would be open to that. Yes, that would be agreeable. Great. Well, um, I'll talk to you then. Captain? Kalak, how's that cream soda? What do you think? You see the Ferengi is looking at a straw that has been destroyed by his teeth. You have to suck it. You have to suck it through it. And he bites down on it again. Your and lips. When he pulls Stop. away. You, don't have, you can't bite. You, should, you have to suck. You, you have to do the sucking no, motion with your lips and mouth and, and, and he's lungs. He's nodding to you as he's chewing on the piece of straw. You know, he just throw it off. away. Just drink it. Just drink it out of the glass. Just drink it? Just drink it down. He takes the straw and just kind of. There you go. And I gotta see your to, face. I want to see it. Ugh. It's disgusting. And he starts to drink it. Um, the door opens as Jiv walks in and says, Captain? Ah, Jiv, great. Uh, go show this guy around. Let's get out of here. Let's head up to the uh, bridge. Oh, you, commander, Lieutenant Commander? You, you do that as you all walk out of the room. Um, Jiv looks at the Betazoid and goes, and then sees the Frankie and goes, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll cut to... <laughs> Why are you hazing our engineer? <laughs> <laughs> totally, no, hazing, <laughs> totally hazing, totally hazing Jeff. There's more of hazing, hazing uh, Kalak, if I'm being honest. I know that if anybody could mm. handle Kalak's incessant questions, it would probably be Jeff. Oh, so. I'm oh, sure Jeff has all the patience. Yeah. I don't mind if Kalak gets hazed. I mind mm. if our engineer does. I see. Mm. All right. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, I can't help it. It's an old Earth custom, I guess. <laughs> old habits and all that. Um, so we're going to cut to later that night. Um, Talon, you are off duty. Uh-oh. 
<laughs> Are you going to make your appointments in the galley? Um, after my meditation, mm -hmm. I, I rise from my meditation spot and I, um, I summon, well, communicator, wow, like you said, mm -hmm. what is the word? <laughs> I, I call Ambassador Rell from my room. Okay. Um, computer, locate Ambassador Rell. Uh, ambassador, sorry, I forgot. Oh, I was oh, gonna see oh, if we actually nice. had battery left in this. There were literal bag. crickets, but <laughs> so I was uh, really happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, ambassador Terrell is in the galley. I I put on my uh, comfortable civilian clothes. Okay. Uh, which is which looks like my off-duty uniform. uniform. Yes, exactly. <laughs> off -duty. Which, by the way, You're in Star Trek Online, uniform. you can change into off-duty uniforms. What's that? I said in Star Trek Online, you can change into off-duty uniforms. Ooh, Ooh. Nice. Yeah. I change into my off-duty uniform and leave my quarters and head to the galley. Um, as the galley doors open, you step in. Um, it looks like a slightly more active evening here in the galley on board the USS Sally Ride. A lot of people are kind of off duty and kicking back a little bit. Um, the crew seems to be a little more relaxed than you would have anticipated as you're walking through the crowd. Um, people are nodding to you respectfully as they see senior staff making their way through. Even though you're in your off duty uniforms, Lieutenant Commander Talon is in the galley, so people pay the proper respect as you move past them. Um, sitting off towards one of the windows, looking out um, at the uh, into warp into the warp space, you see the Ambassador Rel, the Betazoid. Um, sitting there very calmly, just looking out into the stars. Ambassador Rell. Oh, excuse me, I didn't see you come in. He stands up. I did not mean to interrupt if you were meditating or thinking deeply. No, I'm... I, I confess, I'm actually quite terrible at meditation. Every time I sit down to still my mind, I actually discover... it becomes a little more difficult to block emotion from, from the outside. I have some very effective meditations for blocking emotion and controlling it. <laughs> That's right, I wouldn't have thought to ask you that. That makes perfect sense. Um, yes, that would be very, that would be very helpful. Uh, there's a lot of Betazoids who go, especially when they're going into Starfleet, uh, or even associating with other races, you have to go through a specific type of training. Um, Self-control training, for example, uh, not making, making sure you don't inadvertently read somebody's mind. That's very bad etiquette. Um, even empathic reception can be frowned upon sometimes. It takes a measure of control. Um, although, to be honest, empathic reception is kind of impossible to avoid many times. I can only imagine how difficult it must be to control that. Uh, would you like to sit down? Thank you. I sit down. And he slides into the seat. Um, server comes up and he just gives an order to one of the... He says, I'll just take a drink. It, 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 water's fine. I will have a chamomile tea. Um, and then the ship explodes. <laughs> what, what? Oh, huh? Eric? <laughs> no! I'm a dog! I, 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 I forgot to tell you that chamomile tea is actually deadly to Starfleet. Ah! Um, All right, um, I activate the Omega 13. We're fine. <laughs> Whatever it was, it did that. <laughs> we will uh, fix it. <laughs> so, uh, takes your order, um, departs back to the bar. Um, he leans back in his seat and says, um, it's, it's been a pretty interesting couple of weeks, hasn't it, in the Federation? Have you been keeping up to date with some of the things that have been happening? I have. It is very troubling what's been going on with the Klingons and Cardassians and the Dominion. We are in very troubling times, Amb Ambassador. <sighs> Can I be honest with you? Yes, of course. I I'm not oblivious to the fact that I'm a little too young to be an ambassador. <laughs> well, specifically, I'm, I'm good at what I do, but I was placed on Starbase 138 because someone wanted me out of their sight. <laughs> I get the feeling the bureaucracy was just trying to send a young ambassador into the middle of nowhere because they were tired of hearing about how much he wanted to go off and be a great peacemaker. I'm really hoping I never get stationed on a starbase again. 
well, what is it that you want, Ambassador? I'm not entirely sure. But with tensions rising all over the quadrant, I'd like to be of service to the Federation wherever they were willing to send me. I mean, I've heard that the Vorta can be reasonable, but I don't know if that's just hearsay or... I'm just tired of reading reports. I want to get out there, you know? It can be frustrating to feel that your higher purpose is being cut off just because of your age or who you are. Yes, exactly. Did you ever have any issues with that? Well, I do not typically share this with people, but I left Vulcan for that very same reason. I felt that my interests, my specific scientific research and interests were not valued and were seen as unnecessary. You see, my approach to science is much more progressive, you might say, than... Progressive? Progressive, yes. Huh. I see the diversity in logic. I see the diversity in life, and I think it has value. And I do not think that certain ways of life that may seem to be illogical to me are summarily illogical. People live the way that is best for them, and I think there's logic in that as well. <laughs> you know, I've heard Vulcans are an enlightened race, and now I can totally see why. <laughs> Talon kind of looks away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, he, um, as you look away, he, he inadvertently reacts. Um, it's almost like he may have accidentally picked up on... Um. <laughs> Do you want to roll? <laughs> roll Wait, what's roll. happening? What? Roll to see if I can He's keep my emotions in yeah. check. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. This is getting exciting. <laughs> this is for you guys out on a date. Ooh. <laughs> right. I was um. like, who who yeah, thought? I thought we were joking about making it extra sexy. But <laughs> know, so long. Um, so go ahead and, so this is going to be a control, I'm going to say a control, probably command. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> control command. Actually, as a Vulcan, though, I might let you use science on this. I would say control science. That's oh, he ain't getting in them. Yeah, well, I mean, this is, <laughs> this is, this is what you do, so. Hey, yeah. you can always fail a roll. That's true. You can that always opt okay. to fail. <laughs> There's going to be a oh. complication. Succeed. Oh, 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 oh man. Wave just gained <laughs> some momentum. Oh, 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 I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm asking, the question I'm about to ask you, I'm genuinely asking you. Uh -huh. Would you like to succeed at a cost? Uh, no, no, I don't I'm, mind. But I'm saying is, succeeding at cost means no matter what you roll, you're gonna succeed. But if you fail, you immediately gain a complication. Mm -hmm. On top of any sure. complications that What's you might roll. What's the difficulty roll. is the question yes, we should be asking. Yes, that's a good question. Uh, it, How difficult is it to hide? The right. difficulty is gonna be, well, in this case I'm gonna say, well, uh, it's going to be, the difficulty is going to be one, okay. but it's also going to be contested. So I'm going to roll right. for his stat. Mm. Okay. Yeah. It's like melee you got for this. her heart. I'll just do a control <laughs> science. You got this. I'll you just got this. <laughs> this is like me flying. You got this. Yeah, yeah. Right, this I'm is my thing. This stats. is what I yeah. do. Yeah, cool. control so science? Yeah. Okay. He ain't getting nowhere on that. Go ahead and make your roll. I can't control my emotions at this point. I'm a terrible Vulcan. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead make your roll. Let's find out. There's a Venn diagram of Star Trek fans and role-playing game fans that find this whole thing the to be best. the sexiest thing ever. <laughs> oh, and I am so happy about that. I'm not In fact, <laughs> they're on a date right now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. So difficulty one, All tell right. me what you get. Uh, I got one success. <gasps> okay. Um, you this tied, isn't a complication, You right? tied him. Oh. Oh. Do you ties go to defense? Yeah. baby. So, um, I don't know. What does that mean? So <laughs> this is this is this is the the descriptor I'm going to leave you with. Okay. Um, you you react as you do, and he he does this. He's after he's listened to you, he's nodding, and then as you react, he just goes. <laughs> oh, Lisa's reacting. <laughs> oh my gosh! Can, can I be in this room? But he he he, he, oh, he doesn't say anything. It looks like it looks like 
It looks like he... Oh, it's, it's like one of those things where you don't know if you saw something and you think Oof. maybe it was a trick of the eyes. Kind of, it's kind of like, you know what I mean? It's that sort of reaction. So he doesn't... So he, he just kind of he hesitates for a moment and says, Have you enjoyed your service aboard the Sally Ride so far? Wait, do I notice? Wait, I sort of noticed. Yeah, that. you saw that, but I, you 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 get the impression from him that he didn't. Let me put it this way: you get the impression eye. that he. It's like you thought you heard something, and you look around, and there's no one there, and you're like, oh, I thought I heard something. It's that's the kind of reaction you get oh, from him. Okay. But he looks right at you for a split second, almost like he saw it, but he didn't know he saw it. Mm-hmm. I want to go on a date next. Me next. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a Ferengi. So as you two uh, continue. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so he's, he look. says, uh, so you've enjoyed your service on board the Sally Ride thus far? Yes. There have been only a couple of exciting incidents, which I prefer because I'm here for research and for discovery. What kind of exciting incidents? Uh, like scientific, sci- scientific incidents? Well, one was both scientific and very dangerous. We witnessed an amazing, uh, curious gravitational anomaly that caused a moon to crash into its, the planet that it orbits. It was fascinating and very dangerous because we were on that planet. Oh. Did I mention that part? I no. I mention that part. That's incredible. Yes, we narrowly escaped due to the, the expert piloting of Ensign Sage. I'm not here, but I can feel my ears burning. Mm. What was it like escaping a planet that was on the verge of destruction? The research I gathered, the data was astounding. The levels, the, the levels of, the levels of data are unlike anything I've ever seen. I set them aside briefly for my meditation, but during those two weeks, I was pouring through that data. There's something strange happening. The fabric of, of, space is changing, and we don't know why. He kind of leans back in his chair as he's processing that. And we're going to cut to the captain. As you're in your quarters. Um, okay. As you're sitting in your quarters, you hear... Shift to Captain Martinez. Martinez here. Captain, uh, I don't want to sound dramatic, but you might want to come down to engineering. And you might want to bring Dr. Throlo and possibly Lu- Lieutenant Commander Talon with you. On my way. Um, Captain Martinez to Dr. Throlo. Yes, Captain. Meet me in engineering I'm as soon way. as possible. You hear the intercom again. He says, actually, Captain, you might want to bring the commander with you, too. Captain to oh. Commander Rue. Aye, sir. Meet me in engineering as soon as possible. Did you punch out the Ferengi? Hopefully <laughs> not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, um, way. Let's go down there and find out. Um, a Captain few Martinez to Talon. <laughs> yes, Captain. <laughs> Meet me in engineering as soon as you can. Aye, sir. I'm still with Rail, right? Mm hmm. Okay. He says, duty calls. Good night. Uh, good night. He stands up. Uh, thank you for the conversation. You're welcome. You do not have to thank me for conversation. But you are welcome. Now kiss. And I leave <laughs> awkwardly. <laughs> <laughs> you, you walk away and. Uh, he watches. <laughs> and we oh. and um, Talanda squats. <laughs> <laughs> Just yep. a long lift. Yep. <laughs> Talanda tends nerd strong. Um, oh boy. Yes. So, uh, moments later. I'm probably holodeck lifting buddies, by the way. Oh, moments yeah. later, all of you gather in engineering. Um, as you're, you all kind of arrive at the same time coming out of the turbo lifts. Not um, me, right? I wasn't called. No, you're, you're at the helm Sorry, right now. Sorry, guys. I'm you're still this you're, baby. Mm-hmm. Um, Something's got it. As the four of you enter the engineering room, you see something you've never seen before. Jiv, eyes wide, mouth slightly hanging open, looks a little shocked. Um, approaching him, he just goes, uh, yeah. And then he points. Um, you see a lot of the crew members here in engineering have moved away from one side of the warp core and are on the other side of the engineering room. And about 20 feet away from the warp core itself is the biggest damn targ you have ever seen or heard of in what? your life. Probably close to 
five feet at the shoulders. It's almost a baby horse. Oh my gosh. It is tremendously huge. A Klingon Targ in engineering. Standing, it's, the, the effect could not be any more jarring than just by dropping the description on you the way I just did. There is a mutant-sized Klingon Targ next to the warp core, and it's just And as it sees all of you, it just kind of turns, and it doesn't move, it just And that's where we have to go to break. Oh! <laughs> what? Excellent. So, we're gonna cut to break real quick. Um, get back and see what the hell this is all about. Um, stay tuned, don't leave chat, because we're about to have our giveaway, so stay Woo! active in chat. Yeah. Contest time. We will be back in about 10 minutes. So we'll see you then. Good luck. Woo! All right, welcome back to Shield of Tomorrow. Uh, we decided the to dating. play the intro again, because it's rad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it Sax is like, we're, we're gonna play the it's intro amazing. again. I was like, ah, cool, I'm cool. I was supposed to put it on repeat a whole bunch of times and not do the show at all. I mean, I'm not gonna not lie, cool. I watched it a lot. I watched <laughs> the intro a lot. I just, I'm really, I'm just, I'm also just really in love with Leland Cox's his, his theme song. It's just so good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's on point. So we have a winner to the giveaway, our, our first giveaway. Um, the winner um, to the, uh, the pack that we're giving away tonight uh, for Star Trek Online is Travis the Red. Ooh, Ooh. Travis the Red. Travis, Travis. Travis the Red. You got the uh, the pack we're giving away tonight. So I believe that's the temporal agent pack. Yes. Or something? Yeah. Yeah. So Ooh, that's Travis awesome. the Red. Congratulations. Time travel. Time travel. Time tra yeah. yeah. So and that pack is the original skin um, uh, that you get at the uh, at the first tier, which is the starting level. Um, you are going to get um, the uh, original Constitution class USS Enterprise. Um, from the original series. Um, and you are also going to get, I believe it's a Paladin class cruiser, Ooh. which is a futuristic, um, uh, I, I don't know what the exact um, configuration is, but it looks rad on Star Trek Online, but it's a cruiser class, it's a heavy ship. Ooh. It's one of the heavier ships. It's for tanking. Um, All right, Travis so, the Red's gonna so give well me a done, ride. So well done, Travis the Red. We're gonna start giving out, we're gonna do giveaways <laughs> too, where we can involve Twitter a little bit more because we know that a lot of you guys aren't able to watch us live. We also know that there's Hello, a lot of Hello, VOD people. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, VOD people. Um, and VOD villa. VOD villa. Um, we're also going to uh, work out a way to do giveaways through Twitter. If we can, we're gonna work out the logistics of all of this because we know not everyone can stay up super mega ultra late because <laughs> we kind of go late with the show uh, here on the uh, West Coast. So, um, but we'll work that out and more, there's gonna be a lot more giveaways with our partnership with Star Trek Online. So stay tuned. That's so Here's cool. Polite yeah. applause. Um, all right, so let's jump yeah. back into the game because uh, we, we left off on quite a hell of a moment. Um, a lot of you are standing in engineering looking at a tremendously large Klingon Targ. Um, Jiv is standing there with his mouth open and just goes, it hasn't done anything, it's just sitting there. Jiv, have, how did this happen? I have no idea, Captain. One minute we were just doing our thing and the next minute that thing was there. Did somebody beam this aboard the ship? Did it just appear? I mean, the alarms would have gone off, right? If somebody had just beamed on board, it just was there suddenly, inexplicably. I heard an instant scream, I turned around and there it was. How long ago did this happen? Oh, uh, just a few moments ago, right when I called you. But it hasn't, uh, hasn't attacked anyone. It doesn't belong to one of the ambassador or the Ferengi who I wanted to strangle, does it, Captain? No, as far as I know, it does not. As far as I know, what was in the, 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 the Ferengi's uh, cargo? We would have noted life signs, Captain. Of course. Do we have a, uh, do we have like What are you, oh, hold on, what are you doing? Because <laughs> I yeah, see. Yeah, it could still be a hard one. in the direction of the giant tar. <laughs> um, Wouldn't it, Klingon just it literally, a scan? Better? It literally like does this kick. thing, while you're doing this, it literally does this thing where it's and kind of takes a few steps towards you. Okay, all right, uh, Commander? Do we have a like a zoologist expert on board that could come and help us? I would ask the science officer. Okay, I'm gonna set my Ooh, phaser to stun. Talon, can you scan this and figure out what's going on? Yes, Captain. Scanning the Klingon Targ. Uh, okay, so go ahead. For that? Yep, this is gonna be a this is gonna be a reason science roll. All right. I feel like this is something you'd be good at. I, uh, I don't know. I think so. 
Oh. Reason science roll. The difficulty <laughs> is going to be two. All right. Reason science, go. Reason science. Difficulty two. Oh, goodness. I got one success. One success. Um, <sighs> scans, curiously enough, not giving you a lot of reading. In fact, your tricorder scan, as you're scanning it, um, would indicate that nothing is there. Uh, Captain, it appears not to be an actual Klingon target. Perhaps it's a hologram of some kind, a holographic image. I'm getting, am I not getting a life sign? Is You're getting it? a life sign, but it's not actually registering as, you know how when you scan a planet and you, you can see that there's life on the planet, but you can't pinpoint the life? So basically what you're getting from the tricorder reading is that it is alive, but you're not getting anything else from it. It's almost like you've got interference in front of you. Hmm. The tricorder is not getting, it, it's not picking up that anything is actually there. It's, it feels more like a general, it's like a general acknowledgement scan. You know what I'm talking about? It's so like you're scanning yeah, it and the deep, you, Yeah, the, the like deep data that it Yeah, you're pull, not getting any specific pulling. information from it. Okay. So the tricorder is detecting that it's, it's not there. Captain, you can, you, you, it's, it's a really, essentially you're getting a lot of conflicting readings coming through the tricorder right now. Uh, I'm getting a life sign, but uh, not much else. It seems that there's either some disturbance. At this point, it just starts very it calmly. It is definitely alive, Delon. We it can begins to approach it's moving Trollo. towards us. <laughs> Captain, maybe anybody who doesn't need to be in here maybe doesn't need to be in here. Yes, why don't you go ahead and excuse yourself, Doctor. The targ slowly waddles up. It's, it's I, approaching. Commander Rue, could you yeah, could we I'm, put up I'm, a force field of some kind? I don't think we have an internal one within engineering. You can, in engineering, the there's a force field that'll protect the warp core Yeah. in this area that Is you're in. Is it within it? Huh? At this point, as it's Is walking? It's the Everybody can easily slide behind you guys and go into the main engineering area, the like the main engineering section where all the consoles are to, yeah. to like manage the warp core. You can easily all push in there, and there is a force field that will activate and block that part off. So we can move ourselves into there. Mm -hmm. Or away from, away yeah. right. from the warp coast of it. Of At this point, the target is about 10 feet away from Dr. Throlo. Slowly, uh -huh. Well, I'll start pulling no. out a hypo spray, which is hopefully full of tranquilizer. Okay. I mean, I'm going to be inserting else. myself between it and Throlo and okay. cautioning everyone else to is back away. You step in front of it. What kind of, is it like aggressive or is it just like a lumbering, like friendly thing? I won't even have you roll. It does not look aggressive at all. Okay. That's in great. Okay. Then in I will be nearby nonetheless. Why don't we all just move towards the warp core and the warp, warp coil and then let's throw up that uh, force field. Okay. Yep. Everyone starts to back away. Mm -hmm. I like that. Two mm -hmm. things happen. Mm -hmm. As everyone starts to back away, you see A, it begins to wag its tail and then it comes tromping after you. Almost like an incredibly large, vicious looking happy dog. Happy, sure, okay. Um, as you all begin to move back, <laughs> it approaches uh, where the force field activates. Just, I mean, Jiv just reaches over and goes, yeah, 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 yeah. Just force field comes up and the targ hits the force field and just, and just it sits back on its haunches. And you hear these snorting sounds like a pig as it just kind of, and then it tries to lick the force field, just this big tongue, just, and you see the force field just, and it kind of. Doctor, is it just me or does it like you? Uh, you know, I never had a targ, but he does look like a friendly fella. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sitting get... down, it's almost as tall as you, Doctor. Jeez. Is it's, this the It probably size comes up to about here on you. You said this was a giant mutant targ. They're not usually this big. Targs don't grow this large usually. This this is a this is a very large targ. Who are you? Boy? I think we could infer a level of genetic engineering if in fact it's entirely is, possible. It does not it's look It's the masking that's interesting. It, 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 there's so much that this thing is so large that it's unnatural how large it is. Perhaps that could be contributing to why we weren't getting good scanning data if this has been so manipulated as to be unrecognizable as any particular species. It's perhaps. I'd ways like to order, as a precaution, a force field around Cargo Bay 2, just in case there's anything else in those medical supplies call, that Good happens call. to do this, because okay. it's the new mm -hmm. variable, right. unless it comes from our phaser arrays. <laughs> um, I don't think it comes from our phaser arrays. Um, yeah, you hear, uh, you hear, ah, uh, I, Commander, right away. 
And also, I just want to make sure, like, procedurally, that, that this creature, the Targ, can't walk away from us, head towards the main entrance to engineering, and then somehow activate the you doors. You can totally... Like, can we can... Pop no, you can contain it. That you I can want easily to contain, contain it, it here. Yeah. And while it's being contained, uh, Doctor, this might seem like a w odd request. Can you keep it entertained? Can you try to just, behind this force field, just make sure that it's nice and happy and calm and maybe make friends with it, play with it a little bit? There you go. I'd um, love to order tricorder. Is that what you're doing? Sight of non essential um, personnel. You see, it just okay. starts to dip its head, just mm -hmm. like it's following your antenna <laughs> as you're kind of doing. <laughs> oh my gosh. It almost sounds like a low roar, but it gets down low. And if you didn't know any better, you would say that it's kind of this is a targ wine. It's playing. Yeah. Can yeah. we keep him? It goes. I'm not, not in there. No. Kind of I'm drops here. low a little bit. This it's is me as like a person. Plates mm -hmm. all over the, its back with the spikes coming up, uh, sort of like off in the back. I mean, this thing looks, it's its a Klingon dog, essentially. It is pretty terrifying looking, but it just kind of dips low. Can I get some nice medical tricorder time in while we do yes, this? Yes, go ahead and make a scan here. Um, you're scanning its biology, I take it? So this is going to be a reason medicine roll? Excellent. Mm -hmm. And do you have any focuses here that will apply to help you out, uh, Doctor? Xenobiology? Xenobiology yeah. will definitely apply, yes. <laughs> and this is an alien life form. Oh. Do you have that as well? Do have a focus? <laughs> That's okay. Nuts. Oh, well. Ooh. Ah, three. Three what successes. What was the difficulty? Oh, yeah. Uh, what was oh, the difficulty? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I should have told you the difficulty. Difficulty still two. Okay. okay, so we got one momentum. We got Yay! One. Yay! First momentum in the game. Well done. All right, so first momentum, um, three successes. Uh, this is a very normal, healthy targ, unusually large. Um, nothing remarkable about the scan whatsoever. Um, that's from your initial two successes. Yeah, let's, let's get some more information. More information? Yeah. How long has it been a talk? What do you think? How did it get here, maybe? Is there, are there probably any traces gonna, of like... You're probably not get an answer, you're probably not getting an answer like that off of a the medical scan. scan. Well, I mean, that, it's... The question is like, is there any residual weird energy or chemicals in its cells that would indicate it was just created or beamed in here or something like that? I can answer that, yes. Mm -hmm. Is it? All right. Um, it doesn't have any internal anatomy. Sorry, what does that again? mean? It has no internal anatomy. It has no Captains. organs or? It looks like, from your tricorder scan, this targ, for all intents and purposes, looks like it's a living, breathing thing, but you're not detecting the presence of a heart, a nervous system, what? a brain. What? Captain, we've got ourselves a hollow targ. Um, I'll tell you right now, it's registering as a life form. It is not a hologram. Yeah, hollow I meant hollow, hollow. like oh, it has hollow, nothing. hollow, hollow? But once I said it out loud, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Captain, I meant hollow as in it's empty of internal things, although it does sound like I said it was a hologram. It's not a hologram. This is fascinating. Yeah, this should not exist. Hollow. It's hollow. There's nothing there's in no, there. There's that nothing what? in there? What? Not possible. It reminds me of my brother. You hear Ziv kind of mutter. <laughs> All right, I can see its mouth moving. Are you saying that it doesn't have any organs or internal structure? As you, as he asks this question, you watch this thing lick the force field again. You can see deep into its mouth. Yeah. It's not, you know, you see its molars, everything, its sharp teeth, oh. um, saliva, just like you see it's, you know, basically staining the floor of the, of the Sally Ride's engine room. I'm sure that if we observed it long enough, it would poop. Like, there's <laughs> stuff going on in there. It is, for all intents and purposes, not only behaving like a biological entity, but it is also secreting and smelling and yeah. everything else, like a biological entity. All right, so, uh, uh, Commander Rook, can you go ahead and, uh, and, and, and say that order again that you, that you said a little bit ago? Yeah, I'd like to perform a site-to-site -site transport away of all non-essential personnel mm -hmm. from this room. Oh, they can leave. Okay. Yeah. Because you managed to get the engineering team on the inside of the force field. They can just they can leave. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah. Is everybody's the targ a, inside the force field, and we're out. It's so what I'm so this is the scene set up right now is that force field's been put in place, so the warp core is completely protected. And this is one of the most secure areas. The warp core is protected. Uh -huh. The engineering department area where the warp core is managed and main engineering, damage control, everything else like that. You guys are behind that force field. So all critical systems are on your side of the force field. And engineering teams that are stationed here, engineering, like on the second levels, 
have all left, pushed away from the catwalks, and they are behind perspective force fields. Mm -hmm. So the crew can get out through Jeffrey's tubes and everything. They're, you yeah. don't have to beam Great. anybody out if you don't want to. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what are the targ is people? in front of the warp core right now on the other side of yeah. the force field uh, from okay. you guys, still okay. staring, uh, very Ooh. like whining at Doctor Throlo. All right, get out of here. See what we can find on internal sensors of this thing. Okay. Can we pull up internal the, sensors the, information from here in engineering? Yeah, Shiv yeah. can do that for you. Okay. Yeah. So what are our options, everybody? This is either a a a misfiring holodeck. Uh, 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 image that is, I didn't know we had the capability of projecting into the into engineering, or this is some sort of a magical entity that we're Communication with suddenly cuts you off as you're in the middle of asking this question to your crew. As you hear, medical emergency. Dr. Throlo, we need you in sickbay right away. I'm there. Okay, and Dr. Throlo can leave to sickbay. Would it be quicker to do a site to site transport? Um, yeah, it would definitely be quicker. I don't encourage it. Site to site tra site to site transporting should only be done in emergency circumstances. Okay. Um, generally, doctors don't have emergencies. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, fire up my friend. I'll be right there. <laughs> fire up your friend. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> He's my friend. Um, yeah, all right. <laughs> so you you the doctor rushes out. Her blue coat just flowing behind her as she bolts towards the uh, turbo lift door. Shh, closes behind her. Captain, perhaps we could inquire one, both of our visitors if they brought any extra luggage. Yeah, I would like to get a full report of all of their cargo, all, everything that was brought on board the ship today. Can I grab that from engineering from here? Yeah, you should be able to do that. Jim okay. looks at you, he says, uh, we, can, we can transfer sensor controls down here. Great. We need your command code clearance for that, but yeah, we can do it. Sure, you have it. All right, so the two of you walk over to one of the computer consoles. You see Jiv just enter a few um, commands into the LCAR system, and it goes black for a second, and then reboots up and says enter command codes. You just type it in real fast, and you see okay. the sensor display come up of Sally Ride's uh, forward and aft sensor arrays and internal sensors all just pop up. You have full control. Um, You're going to make a scan? Yes. You want to roll for the Sally Ride for us? And use my focus in xenobiology. <laughs> yes, this would definitely like come in a handy. a person who knows their focuses. Well, okay. Talon is a little flustered from earlier While this While she's evening. doing this, I just want to say, the stage is on the bridge going, what, where is everybody? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, it's a very empty bridge. I'm just chilling. I'm okay, <laughs> so this is, and now we're using the internal scanner, so we have the assistant. The sensor signs That's right. and the one down. Yeah. So the difficulty was going to be three. Okay. But two. Sally Ride, being the badass ship that she is, reduces the sensor difficulty to two. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and what's up? Are you rolling? Do you think our seven? captain would be rolling a command assist for this as well? Ooh. Um, no, I don't think okay. so. No, this would be just straight up Talon, yeah. And does the focus? What is the focus? Getting? You're I, now. What are you scanning for? Um. What's the physics? <laughs> <laughs> what's the physics? Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> WTF, mate. Well, we've already s we know that there's no internal organs being right. Sensed. If it's hollow, is According it sensing to Dr. And Throlo, mass this, yeah. consistent with that? Like, how is this working? According to Dr. Throlo, this animal should not be alive right now, mm -hmm. and yet is a fully functioning biological entity of some kind. And there was no... Uh, that, by the way, it's very sad and upset to see Dr. Throlo run away oh. and it can't get after her. He likes it when you bob your head! <laughs> <laughs> do this a lot. <laughs> if, if I heard that, then I just gently... Oh my god, yes. Suddenly bob my head. Okay, you're just like... And <laughs> the target's just watching you. Just, I mean, it's like listening to Ludo at the other end of the... <gasps> just, Ludo! So a friend. Um, this, this, this targ is just kind of just sitting there on the other side of the force field, just... Are you rolling right. sound? Uh, yeah. yeah okay. All right, go ahead and okay. make your sensor scan. Your sensor, so just another deeper scan. Yes, difficulty yeah. is gonna be two. Okay. Um, I'll let you, right, so if you're, you're using the ship's internal sensors, mm -hmm. you're directing the full firepower of that the Sally out. Ride's impressive sensor suite. Uh, directed straight at engineering, so. Um, yeah, can we sense the area? I want to see if there's a path that it came from. Like, did it disappear? I know is there, if it's the That would be information that you would try to get when you do the scan. Yeah, okay, So yeah. Um, if you yeah, get momentum it. from this. Then we great. can get that. Yeah, okay. so go yeah, ahead and make your roll. It's going to be uh, reason yes, and science. And you, I will let Ooh. you, you can okay. apply your xenobiology to this. 
Then I got a four and a seventeen. So that's your focus. We your focus number. Yeah. yeah so, one. so so that'll I, activate two successes. Two successes, and then that's right on my numbers. Yeah. Then, it okay. yeah. then it counts as a success. So success. Three, three successes three total. Successes. So you get one, one momentum. Four is one from Sally. Sally. Oh, and how many? So two momentum. Woo! All right. And uh, so uh, so the Sally ride is detec detecting nothing on the other side of that force field. Oh. Like nothing. There is nothing there. Except a life sign still? Or nope. nothing? No life sign. <gasps> oh, 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 Captain. <laughs> I believe there must be some type, something happening where our tricorders are being tricked into reading a life sign because the ship's sensors do not re scan anything. There are no life signs on the other side of that force our, field. Our tricorders are being tricked? Yes. So we have all of us malfunctioning equipment here. Yes. Are you saying this is some sort of a mental projection right now? Well, for the for our tricorders, yes, and I believe it is a hologram that our tricorders are being tricked into thinking is a life sign. So we're I gonna cut. Oh, oh, go ahead. What are you gonna say? I can think of other ways to obtain information about its nature, like perhaps yeah. interviewing those who might have brought it there. If we I would like to do that, there. Captain. So are we you, if, obtaining information? Are we? I see. You are not spending momentum. You're talking about going to. Are you I'd pull like those? to go make some interviews. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Commander Rue is like. <laughs> I would like to talk to our passengers. You know what? I, you know what I'd like to do, if it's possible. What's up? Can I want to spend one of the momentum that we made from that uh, sensor scan to look at literal closed circuit camera. I get you. You want to look at security footage. I want to see the security so footage of it popping into existence. And like Talon was saying, did it come from a path? Where did it come if from? I just want to down, I just want to see it and literally break it down to the yeah. nth degree to see. Solid. That's super easy to do. Solid. You don't okay. even have to roll. Uh, you won't have to spend momentum for that. OK. Right. Yeah, absolutely what do not. we see when That's we do That's literally just that. walking over to the computer and yeah. saying, computer time index, such and such. Yes. Uh, show me the engineering room. OK. So as you're looking back at the engineering footage, you're seeing Jiv. Um, talking to an ensign, hands him a pad, walks over to the warp core and does a few inputs on a pad itself, then hands that pad off. You see a few personnel walking by. It looks like engineering is running like a smooth machine. Mm -hmm. Okay, fast forward, like fast forward. Like a bad forward, movie okay, edit out of nowhere. Yeah. It just, it's there suddenly. Like a bad movie edit. Like In other words, like it was a frame that just suddenly got inserted into yeah. the film. Like so now I'm going all, back it doesn't even, it is just, there any energy just discharge? Anything nothing. happening? Nothing. It's just there suddenly. What? Whoa. It's just there. Hologram. And you see, it, it appears so suddenly. Computer, even with a hologram. It yeah. appears so suddenly that no one notices it at first. But it is appearing its size. on the cameras. Mm -hmm. You basically see it in, in uh, the, on the screen. The um, you what see one of the ensigns turn around and scream. And that's what gets Ziv to turn around. And then everyone reacts. And he starts waving people back. And the Targ. Uh, just sits down on its haunches mm -hmm. and watches people run back. Doesn't okay. do anything. <laughs> okay. To go back to that moment, is there any other way that I can break down a smaller increment of time? Yep. To see if it. You like, order the computer. I'll, I'll just save you time right now. You, I'll just tell you right now. You order the computer to slow down to its slowest possible yes. increment of time, and the effect is exactly the same. Gosh. It's there, wow. and it's not there, and then it's there. That's quantum. Wow. This is making me, absolutely, this is leading me to believe that we're dealing with energies way beyond our understanding. If this is some, this some is some. voodoo stuff, something going on. Yes, this is some um, powerful yes. mental projection or something so that's happening. So, mm -hmm. cut to, you yeah. walk, shh, the doors open as you stomp into, into sick bay, uh, rushing to find out what the medical emergency is. You see the emergency medical hologram looking at you and goes, ah, there you are. I believe this is somebody you know and turns and you see laying on the, on the bed is Ambassador Rell, completely unconscious. Hmm? Medically, I can't find anything wrong with him. My boyfriend. Mm -hmm. What do we know? Just that he collapsed in his quarters. Who found him? Security, after he didn't respond to repeated calls. I believe Commander Rue wanted to have an interview or was asking about cargo. I didn't get the full story. I was too busy trying to figure out why he was unconscious. Fair enough. Well, if my job is done here then, he clips the, holo the tricorder closed and he says, I believe I can leave this up to you. Pleasure seeing you as always. He just quirks an eyebrow and says, you have to turn me off, doctor. <laughs> You're going to agree eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Image disappears. Um, 
Now, what have you been up to? Go ahead and make your reason and medicine check. And yes, your biology, your focus will apply here cool. as you're running the scan. Uh, may I spend for a third? Sure. Well, what's the difficulty? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm so used to playing Doctor Who that I'm just like, you don't succeed. Roll. You do succeed. Yeah. Um, so go ahead, and the difficulty here is going to be three. Okay. Ooh, yes. Yeah. So we're taking yeah. momentum down for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to spend a momentum. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Getting that extra dice. Make your roll. Woohoo! All right. No focus hits, but three, three successes. Three successes exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. The tricorder is picking up um, unusual brain activity. It almost looks like he has, from, from the brain waves that you're picking up uh, from the tricorder scan, it almost looks like he's been knocked out. Like, it, it's somebody who has been, it almost looks like he's undergone, uh, it, like he's in a dream state almost maybe, like somebody has knocked him unconscious. What's the association between being knocked unconscious and entering a dream state? The brainwave patterns, basically yeah. there's no, let's just say that the brainwave patterns would would indicate that he is sort of, there's no active, he's not conscious right now. What yeah. you're getting from, from the tricorder scan is that. Um, is there any sign of head trauma? No head trauma. Okay. But it looks like he has entered into a coma essentially from the scans. There's no sign of trauma to the brain. There's no sign of trauma to the skull, but he is, com he is not just unconscious. He is in a full coma. And there's, now you have Betazoid biology totally available to you. Um, you're not detecting any unusual readings coming from him. He is just straight up in a coma. Uh, At that point too, Dr. Thurlow, as you're scanning him, you begin to smell something. And as you smell it, you, you, you pause for a second as the tricorder, you're just running the tricorder scan over his body and you pause as you begin to sort of become distracted from the scent. And you begin to realize as it starts to creep into the back, you feel it creeping into the back of your neck. It's almost like a small, it's anxiety, like a surge, like that gentle, like, almost like where you can feel like your heart is about to start beating faster than it's supposed to. That, that, that moment before the fall into a panic attack, you smell grime oil from gears, open wounds, all of these scents begin to flood back into your senses. Familiar, very familiar smells. The smell of deep earth, a musk from rock faces deep down below. And as you kind of feel all of these sensations permeating through you, you begin to realize you're feeling it on your skin now, cold. All over your body, your skin just feels like suddenly you're chilled. And then you hear, throw low! Behind you, someone shouting at you, irritatingly. As you turn, you find yourself looking at Dr. Vriza. He is an old, old Andorian, scarred and wrinkled face, probably from worry lines. You can see deep inset eyes, someone who's probably been in this mine far too long, far too long. And from the look in his eyes, you can tell he, you're not sure how he gets up every morning. Um, he's looking at you in irritation and says, pass it to me. And as you pass him the device, kind of just on instinct, whatever it is, you're kind of not sure what you're handing him until you realize it's a blade. And he takes it from you and says, where were you? And he goes back down and you see there's an Andorian underneath uh, being held down by four other Andorians. And it occurs to you as you look around, you're in a mine shaft. You're in a hollowed out room made of rock being supported by rickety iron like beams. And you can hear the grinding sounds of a mine all around you echoing down the hallways. Just past 
the horrific screams of this Andorian who has a pulverized left arm. Um, probably one of the, ac yes, you remember this, the accident, a gear. Sleeve got caught in a gear, arm was pulled into the gears. It's been completely pulverized. And you know what comes next as they hold him down and without any anesthesia, without any other medical devices, he takes the knife and begins to remove the pulverized slump of an arm. As you hold him down, you hear the doctor say, someone cover his mouth. Dolo, cover his mouth. Yes, sir. As you put your hand over his mouth, he looks at you, tears streaming down his eyes, and then you see his eyes roll into the back of his head as he blacks out from the agony. He's And then he's unconscious as you hear the noises just More where this came from, Doc? <clears throat> what? More where this came from? He looks and says I've got this one. If he survives, he survives. Why don't you go help the others? Um, as, you, as you turn and look, you see a row of probably like 12 Andorians. Some of them are nursing what looks like, there's one Andorian whose hand looks like it's been broken. She's trying to hold it in place. It's facing the wrong way. And she's just kind of like, she's got her eyes closed and she's just, it looks like she's counting backwards and rocking back and forth. Um, there's no medicine down here. There's no painkillers, no nothing. Um, it's all coming back. She kind of approaches you and says, six, five, four, three, two, two one. one. You, she screeches in agony, um, swallows the sounds of the mines um, and echoes down the hallways as we pull back um, Throlo in the mine shaft um, and door 706, you are 23 years old, watching as these Andorians get shoveled in here like meat to be fixed and sent back to the mine. The day begins to pass. It's one horrific injury after the next. There has been a cave-in on the lower levels of the mine. And you have been told by the people, the higher ups, the people in charge of the mine, um, that unless you stay down here and fix everybody and get them in working order to go return to the mines, you will not be receiving any pay or off-world transportation for the next six months. Heck of a way to pay for med school. Um, when the day does finally come to an end, uh, Vriza walks over and kind of brings you over. You, you're covered in blood. Um, the soot and the smell of gore, it's, when you first arrived here, you remember throwing up every two, maybe three hours. Um, then you began to realize how many food rations you were being given, and your health is in danger. So you managed to tr train your body to swallow it when you felt it coming, because you weren't getting anything else. You weren't sure if you were a volunteer doctor or a prisoner, but it certainly felt like it. When the day finally wraps up, you have one of your rare treks up to the top of the mine where you finally get a blast of moist, warm air stepping out. Um, Frieza standing next to you, leads you up out of the mine, walks you over, tells you to says, here, sit down. I wanna to talk to you. What about? This uh, off-world thing you've been talking about. I want to go to Starfleet. Starfleet. You want to go to Starfleet. What do you think you're going to find at Starfleet, Throlo? 
won't be like this. You don't think so? You don't think after your academy days, you're not going to be sent right back into this? Out there, people take care of each other. Sure. Just like you take care of people here. But they don't push. We don't just send them right back into the same machines that ate them. They do that themselves. You're not going to find anything in Starfleet that isn't what you're finding down there in that mine. You stay here, you can help me. Well, I don't know. Make it easier on these people, I guess. As easy as you can. I don't know how many years I've got left, and if you leave and I something happens to me, there's no doctor here anymore. You really gonna leave these people? You really think you're gonna find something different out there? You're gonna sit here and look at me and tell me the galaxy isn't filled with cruelty? There's a million minds waiting for you out there. The only thing different about a starship and this mine is you get air conditioning. It's been my honor to serve and pay off my education, but I want I want to see those stars. You can see them just fine from here. Fine. He stands up. He said, you do whatever you want to do. And while you're up there looking at those stars, I just want you to remember. Remember what you saw today. It has to be better up there. Oh, sure. People don't count backwards up there. Good luck at Starfleet. And the crunching of gravel as he turns and leaves you alone in the night as he starts walking back towards the mine. You can hear screams echoing out of the dark. And the hand that grabs your shoulder shakes you as you whirl around to one of your nurses going, Doctor, are you all right? Uh, how's my patient? He's still unconscious, Doctor. You weren't responding. Are you okay? How much do you know about betazoids? They're a telepathic species, a member of the Federation race. How long was I gone just now? Gone, Doctor? Uh, lost in thought. Well, just a few moments. You weren't saying anything. Any unusual spikes in activity? <sighs> uh, looks at the tricorder and says, none that I'm detecting, Doctor but then our medical tricorders really can't monitor psychic activity, if that's what you're asking. Just keep your wits about you. Y yes, Doctor. Captain, uh, <clears throat> the ambassador uh, is stable, but some unknown event has caused him to enter a coma. Um. I'm going to say this as you're getting this information on this because you guys are all still down in engineering. Mm -hmm. um, this is the first you've heard that the ambassador was anything other than stable. Mm -hmm. Because remember, and, and this would make sense because Thrill is a little out of it, but no one has told you that the ambassador was in sick bay and had a problem to begin he's with. He's just leaving right. with the <laughs> fact that he's not dead. So when you, when you, when you hear this, <laughs> the, ambas the ambassador is stable. You see Jiv go, wait, what? Looks up. That's good to hear, Doctor. Ambassador Rell is who you're describing? Yes, Ambassador Rell is in my sick bay. Uh, they found him unconscious in his room. Um, but he's, he's having some real vivid dreams right now, as far as we can tell. Vivid dreams. Some unknown trauma has caused him to enter a coma state. Does anyone know the status of our other guest? 
We're going to find that out for you, doctor. Thank you. Keep me uh, updated with his um, condition. Will do, Captain. Thank you, doctor. Our guest is in a coma. Who was with the ambassador last? Shiv says, well, I can check security footage. Okay. Uh, I saw him shortly before coming here, Captain. Where, where did you see him? Did you see him go into a coma? No, he was in the galley and we had a, a conversation. You were, remember, you were there for that invite too. He seemed, he seemed pensive and thoughtful when I approached him at first and then I didn't notice anything terribly or out of the ordinary. Okay, all right. Um, Commander, can you find out the location of our other guest? Aye, sir. Thank you. All right, here's what I want to do. I want us to leave engineering. Okay. So that we can do some sleuthing. But I want to bring in a, a, a crew, uh, maybe some security personnel to just keep the TARG entertained and try to do their best impression of what the doctor was doing earlier. Okay. Why uh, don't we try to see if it can be lured to the brig? Hmm. Yeah, sure. If that's possible, get some uh, some leash, some maybe some <laughs> brave personnel to come and maybe uh, yeah. If we have a leash or some kind Ship of says we, we could probably lure that. it to one of the cargo bays. That might be easier. Mm -hmm. I what don't know how we're gonna get it into the turbo lift. What did, what what does Targ uh, what did Targ eat? What kind of a treat do they like? Meat, I believe. All right, thanks, Shiv. Probably <laughs> meat. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> We'll replicate something Sassy. from Kona. Okay, oh, fantastic. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Thanks, you. All right, we'll task a few. Right. Okay, so the force field comes down? Yeah. Uh, okay. No. <laughs> it doesn't. No. <laughs> we leave engineering. Some personnel come in uh, to try to keep the target entertained. Maybe some daring personnel come in from the main entrance to engineering with a piece of meat, with a leash, whatever that they can do. But everybody is on high alert. Okay. But we? No, no, no. The, okay. the shield does so, not come down. We'll leave. So to set the scene up for you as y'all leave, the ensigns and lieutenants that go in there and try to, to lure this thing out, the, the targ kind of pounces forward and back like it wants them to chase it. Play. Play. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh, and this goes on for a few minutes. Picture my dog Punky as a targ. Oh. <laughs> oh my um, God. So, there could so be so the the, the uh, so so the targ leaps forward and gets down and then tries to get someone to chase after it and when it's not happening the targ looks a little like crestfallen and eventually begins to follow them rather amiably you know oh, okay great um one it actually gets close enough to the, to one of the instances that it starts to nudge nudge it the, the instance like oh god oh okay okay oh that's gonna leave a lot of stains. <laughs> and they are very easily able to lead this very excited Targ. Aww. It seems very willing to follow them wherever they are going. Okay. Um, I can only imagine crew members walking down the hallway seeing this and going, Ugh, and just like, <laughs> that great scene in Ghostbusters where she steps out after, <laughs> like, and just, oh, closes the door. Exactly. Um, so, uh, so we're going to head to Med Bay. Uh, Med Bay. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm so oblivious. You like, are actually your duty shift is coming to an end. So as oh, so as you're you're signing off basically, and uh, one of the other ensigns comes mm -hmm. over and says, "Ensign Lark, uh, I'll take it from here." All right, thank you. He takes a seat, swivels back into the chair, it's, and uh, been logs pretty in. smooth sailing so far. So enjoy your <clears throat> break. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we're heading to rendezvous with a ship first, right? Before that's correct. We head to, to gonna uh, rendezvous with the ship first. Ivar three. What is going on yeah. With the ship? Um, so as you are approaching the elevator, Ensign Sage, you hear, Anel. Like from Anel? somewhere on the bridge, yeah. you hear someone say, Anel. Who's Anel? As you turn around, there's no one seems to be looking at you. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Okay. There's no, like everyone is busy doing, as the night shift begins aboard the ship. Okay. Um, no one seems to be even noticing that you've paused in front of the turbo lift. Everything seems to be proceeding as normal. Okay, I'll just assume that it was just a, one of those things where you hear a thought in your head and continue on to the turbo lift. Okay. A few moments later, you all walk into sickbay. Shh. Stepping into the room, you see Dr. Throlo, 
um, and medical staff um, all busy at work looking at scans from mm -hmm. the ambassador who's unconscious on the bed. Um, I will say this, Thurlow, Dr. Thurlow is putting on, you can tell that she is standing upright and has her head cocked to the side and that usual sort of inquisitive, like curious self, but for lack of a better way of describing it, um, because you senior staff know her so well, she looks shook. Um, and as the, the lot of you approach, uh, I might even say that th through that blue skin, it looks like she may be a little pale. Um, <clears throat> so as you all approach, Dr. Thurlow greets you. Captain. Doctor, what's the update? Nothing. I, uh, there's no sign of head trauma. There's no sign of a specific event. Uh, but I assume I have tried to wake him and it has not worked. Can we pull up uh, any uh, footage of um, the ambassador's last location? Yep. And see exactly Easy. when he fell unconscious into this coma. And also, I wanted to find out the location of the Ferengi Kalak and have him meet us here at Medbay. Oh, I thought I was going after him. I don't. You I didn't can, think I was you, going to Medbay. You can go after him. Yeah, because you, you, you ordered me off. So you I wanted to go question Kalak, right? Yeah. To question him, sure. You uh, ordered me back in engineering, so I assume we split off. I okay. Did yeah. not, I did not go to Medbay. Okay. okay. Cool. So you went to yeah. have a chat. Yes. With Mr. Ferengi. But do we have his location though? Like, do we know where he is? Yes, he's in his quarters. Yes. He's in his quarters. Great. Mm -hmm. So I'll just update the doctor with that information. Like, okay, oh, cool. our other Ferengi guest is just in his quarters. Commander Ru is on their way to have a chat with them right now. Fantastic. We'll keep you updated to make sure that the that, that uh, the Ferengi is fine. Okay. So what does the <laughs> footage show? Um. So you bring it up on the screen, and you all watch. You see. Um, Ambassador Rell is in his quarters. It looks like he's unloading books, which you can appreciate. Hardcover books aren't usually seen in travel. But he unloads a few tomes, so to speak, puts them on the desk, and you see him pull out a few models. One of them is the Phoenix. He sets it down uh, on the desk and walks over to his replicator. So it looks like he orders a drink. And as he's drinking, he picks up the Phoenix and he's examining it. And he sets it down in front of the window. And it looks like he's just looking at it from the, the backdrop of the stars behind it. And um, then you see him kind of wipe his forehead for a second. And then you see him grip the chair and set the glass down. And he holds himself there for a second. And then he goes, you can hear audio. He says, uh, computer. And then he just pitches forward, grabbing his head and drops to the ground. Um, and you hear him go, and he just lays there. When was this? What's the timestamp on this? Was that this was the happening? The timestamp literally it coincides from the moment the targ appeared in engineering. Really? Mm -hmm. And then how long ago after that did Jiv contact us to meet him in engineering? Moments later, could have hmm. been more than ten seconds when somebody finally noticed there was a big effing targ just sitting right next to the, the so, work did core. did you say that you saw Ambassador Rell in the galley? Before going to engineering? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I want to I, I want to pull that up. Okay. Where's the footage of that? I want to pull that up. Okay, you go to this correct time index, you see the galley, and you see Talon speaking with You're watching their the ambassador. <laughs> this was... Um, yeah, this was about the same time index. What? Hmm. First of all. Which one of those is my patient? I apologize that I had to pull you away. It seems like you were having a nice social visit. That's very nice. It was not wait a social a minute. visit. You hear Jib say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There were two on board the ship at the same time. These have the same time index. Yeah. It looks like this uh, coincides with when the Targ appeared, but then Ambassador Rell is with you sitting at this table in a galley. And then right at that time, Index, you get pulled away because Ziv contacted all of us to meet him in engineering. Um, so where is the other Ambassador Rell? Captain, Shiv leans for you. Do we have a changeling on board? Don't get ahead of yourself, Shiv. We don't know all of the facts yet, okay? 
he, you see he actually takes some comfort in. He's like, yeah, yes, sir. Computer, what is the location of Ambassador Rell? Ambassador Rell is in sickbay. Computer, what is the location of the other Ambassador Rell? <laughs> Ambassador Rell is in sickbay. Captain, before I met with Co Ambassador Rell in the galley, I asked the computer about their, his location, and the computer identified Ambassador Rell as being in the galley. Being in the galley. Okay, I want to keep finding the footage of this Ambassador Rell who's in the galley. When Talon gets up and leaves, I want to keep following him until okay. we get to the moment that we are right now, which is just really minutes later. Yeah. So you watch Talon get up. You all notice what it's hard to, it's hard to miss. It looks like maybe something of an awkward moment, um, mostly on behalf of Rell. And as Talon walks away, he watches her go. And then he sits back down for a few moments. And then he gets up and nods to one of the servers. Mm -hmm. And he leaves this area of the recording, immediately entering into another area of recording where you see the door to the galley. At this point, Talon would have reached the turbo lift and is already on her way down mm -hmm. to engineering. You watch him walk out the doors of shh to the galley. As he steps out into the hallway, the recording continues to follow its empty hallway. He steps out of the hallway and just like that, get out. He's gone. Like he was never there. Oh. Blinks completely out of existence from that. I assume from we that. can do the same thing. We can zoom in to that time it's frame. The it's the exact still... same effect. It's just not there anymore. Jiv says, what about what happened after he passed out in his quarters? All right, Jiv, I was just about to do that. Let's pull that footage up. Let's follow him there. Jiv he nods. You out. see Jiv looks hungry to find out what the hell is going <laughs> <Yeah>. on. Um, <laughs> he just leans forward and types it in. You watch. The ambassador lays unconscious and lays unconscious until the doors open and security comes in okay. and finds him. And, and you see them tap the yeah. medical emergency, ambassador's quarters, and they pick him up and they carry him out. And you can actually follow the footage of him being carried down to sick bay mm -hmm. and placed in the bed. Okay. Where a few moments later you see the EMH, please state the nature of the medical okay. emergency. And it continues and to, the time the, index continues to play out. The time index of Dr. Uh, Shishiro's getting called over there, got mm -hmm. it, it all makes sense. Okay, yep. great. Except that it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> um, Commander yeah. Rue, what do we know about the capabilities of Betazoid telepathy? Can we pull all of that information up? Oh. Is there something we don't know? Commander Rue's not there. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I right. assume that's we were right. over calls. That's right. Though, if you want to Commander Rue. Stuff, that's always good. I'm going to say that at this point, yeah. Commander Rue is going to be standing at the door to uh, Clax quarters. Okay, great. All right. So, pressing the button. Um, shh, door opens and says, Oh, oh I assume that would be like a knock at least. Oh, sure well, yeah. No, you press Don't the button, it works like a doorbell. A few moments later, cool. shh, the door opens. Um, Clack looks at you and says, Commander! Oh, I'm so happy to see you. There's so many more questions I have to ask you. <laughs> Would you like to come in? Please. Uh, you step inside and he says, oh, these quarters are a bit smaller than I would be used to on a Ferengi vessel, but much nicer. The lighting, very good, very nice. How much do you think a vessel like this would cost on the open market? <laughs> more than you could ever dream of. I can imagine that being true. <laughs> I don't have that much of an imagination, to be honest with you. No, you can't imagine quite that much. He, his face kind of falls and says, uh, no, I suppose not. Can I get you something to drink? I'm going to take a seat. Okay. You sit back in one of the chairs. He says, excellent. Uh, how about a Roctogino? They're completely <laughs> disgusting. Uh, computer, two Roctogenos. Hot. Mm. Pulls it out and sets one down in front of you and says, so, what do Trill like to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> Something happened to the ambassador earlier Ambassador today. Rell? Yes. Is he all right? No. What, what's happened to him? It appears he's gone into a coma. Did he drink too much? No. He 
You don't think I'm in danger, do you? Possibly. What should I do? Is there anything I need to know? Uh, aside from Rakticino being disgusting? <laughs> do you want to try to make a roll to, to see if he's lying or hiding something? What's your, what do you want to get from him? Oh, um, I'm going to sit there. Okay. I'm not going to say anything. Okay. I'm going to wait. You're going to try to get him to sweat a little? <laughs> yeah. He, okay, he, he lets the observation about Rock Digino fall, and then he stares at you and says, <laughs> Is there something on my face? <laughs> Are you trying to talk to me through your mind? <laughs> Frankie, it's not so easy with us. Telepathy and whatnot. I, I can't hear you if you're talking to me. <laughs> Should I call a doctor? Are you all right, Commander? Anything I need to know? Oh! <laughs> You're trying to intimidate me. <laughs> I, uh, no. I wanted to intimidate you. I stand back up. You rise. You stand easily a shoulder or head taller, taller than this Ferengi, which isn't unusual because you're slightly smaller of a species. You'd be intimidated. I'll pick up the rock to Gino and put it in the replicator because I'm not drinking it. Okay, the computer reclaims it. Yeah. Um, he just says, I, I don't understand. What do you want? I know you brought cargo aboard. I know you have luggage. You and the ambassador are the uncontrolled variables on our ship for what's happening. If there's something that happened to Ambassador Rell, there could be something that would happen to you. I have no desire for that. I'd hate to see something happen to the passengers aboard my ship. Well, yes, I wouldn't want anything to happen to me either. <laughs> to be blunt, I'm on the way to a very big payday. <laughs> Profiteering on drugs. It's a bit sad. Well, someone has to pay for this. Indeed they do. I'm sure you make quite a handsome profit. But oh no. yes, shall I tell you? Quite a bit of profit, though I will admit, some of the Ferengi frown upon the way I do business, especially with medical supplies. I have discovered that if you are generous with your prices and medical supplies, you build what humans like to call a good reputation. And people see me as sort of a latinum hearted Ferengi. Makes more people come to me, and it benefits uh, everyone. Glad to hear. If there's any of those medical supplies, that could affect a Betasoid. Uh, I don't know that much about the medical supplies. I only purchase and sell them. You cert sent a manifest to our doctor, yes? Yes, the full manifest should be available on your computer, Commander. Glad to hear. Would you like me to load that for you? <laughs> I'll have it printed later. Printed? If there's anything else you think of, let me know. Uh, yes, Commander. You walk out. Yeah. Says, Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're gonna cut back down to the med bay unless you're gonna do something else. Um, no. Can I have gotten an overall insight roll from that? Yeah. Go ahead and make cool. a roll. It's gonna okay. be difficulty one. It's gonna be contested. Um, I'm gonna spend a momentum on that, y'all, because sure. my cool. insight is. Garbage. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Yo, I'm not gonna win this. <laughs> All right, make a Inside's roll. It's garbage. Garbage. <laughs> Did you roll any threats? Any? Any? Uh, nah. Oh, just no garbage. Just garbage. Um, what are we? Insight and Difficulties what? Difficulties one. So it's going to be insight, and in this, you know what? I tell you what, I'll be merciful. In this, I'm gonna give you insight security. Oh, hey, two. Okay. <laughs> oh, we got a momentum back. Um, um, what momentum? 
That, that Ferengi is... seems genuinely confused and probably yeah. not at all there. That like, was pretty much my vibe. Yeah, he, he definitely seems like <laughs> he is unusually ignorant of the ways of, he probably doesn't travel the stars very often. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't um, getting a vibe there was very much offense. Yeah, I'm he, glad that my insight confirms. Yeah, he, he <laughs> yeah. You, you get the impression that if that conversation had gone on, he would have started asking even more invasive questions under the guy, uh, under, like, yeah. You, you, yeah, just no no filter, just kind of just, he's, he's an unusual Ferengi, but mm. you didn't get anything weird off of it. He just seems a little oblivious. Yeah. And maybe I'm sure a, little, a good reputation is meant to be taken advantage of at the opportune moment. It's entirely possible, yes. That would not be unusual for a Ferengi. Um, and the other part is that you you definitely get a, a small sense of anxiety from him when you brought up that the ambassador was unconscious and that he might be in danger. Yeah, sure. Um, it, it, One it, would expect. Yeah, mm -hmm. he seemed genuinely concerned for his own well-being. That I will give you. He seemed his first instinct was, oh, Arel, whatever. What about me? It's kind of like yeah. his his immediate re reaction. All right, I'll calms the captain. Tell him I don't think there's anything in play. Okay. From Kalak. Okay. I received that. You do? Hmm. You received that. Um, okay, great. Question for you. Would I have access to like all the names of the people on the ship? Like all the crew and everything? Yeah. I, I would have access you go to back that. To, so are you, yeah, you're back to your quarters by now, I would think? Yeah. I feel like... Yes. You would definitely I would have, have been freaked out a little bit. You're senior staff. Yeah. Even though you're an ensign, you are senior staff. You it's definitely like, have right. access to crew manifest. I figured. I wanted yep. to actually look in the manifest and see if there was anyone by the name of Anel that maybe I was just like, mm. did someone call out and like... Computer, bring up crew manifest. Any mm -hmm. crew member by the name of Anel. Of Anel. Um, a few moments as you hear some beeping from the computer and you said, negative. There is no crew member on board the USS Sally Ride by the name Anel. Then I'm just gonna think of it as cream soda overdose, and <laughs> I, I don't know. Like uh, I don't think that's terrifying. Well, well, yeah, <laughs> I feel like you know. There's always times when like you think you hear something and you know you don't. I, I'm, it might have been someone saying out a command or or just talking to someone uh, close to them, and I I might have misunderstood them. Or maybe yeah. the ship's haunted. I don't know. Hmm. Captain. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. So just, you kind that's of, what I'm going to think. You kind of lean back looking at the crew roster as the list plays out. I mean, you watch the highlights scroll through all the names mm -hmm. of the 200 plus people on board of the Sally Ride, and including the passengers, um, there is no one by that name. And as you kind of lean back and kind of stare at it with a furrowed brow, you, you don't know why but you just feel this sense of loss that you can't explain as you lean back. You just, something about it, but you cannot imagine why. Um, back in sick bay. So in the meantime, <laughs> in the meantime, the other thing that I wanted to do is follow the disappearing act Rel, mm -hmm. and go back to see oh. if he popped into existence or when and if yes. and when there was a split. I just right want to find that. Right in front of the doors of sick bay, you find him blink into existence. In front of the doors of sick bay. Uh, not so, I'm sorry, not sick bay, the galley. galley. The galley. So Where in front of those doors, blinked into existence, walked into the galley, had dinner with Talon, came back out, blinked out of existence. Yep. What was the other Rel doing when this one showed up? In I his imagine quarters. he was in his quarters. He was in his quarters, and I imagine that if we were to follow him, he would go all the way back to meeting us in the uh, greeting room, and then before then, f tracking him all the way to the ship, or being transported aboard, like it's- That, that, he, he's, that, he's, that rel doesn't the real blink, one. yeah, yep. does not blink out at all. Okay. Walks from place to place, does his interactions, nothing suspicious about his behavior or his activities. He just walks right in, goes into his quarters. How long have these two people been on board? A I mean, it's been hours? about hours? Yeah, it, it hasn't been long. You guys departed Starbase yeah. like maybe six hours ago, I okay. guess. It's, it's the end of that shift. Mm. So you're Maybe. coming to the end of the day when right. you guys have left DS5. Maybe this is a long shot. Can we find if there's any other, maybe with like facial recognition, any other instances 
of Aurel popping in or out of existence in those six hours? You're gonna have to do uh, a computer search to do that. Okay. Do you want to put Talon on that? I do you definitely want to put Talon on that. Can we do okay, an assist cool. thing though, command assist for that? Um, no, this wouldn't be a command assist on this it's one. It's okay. Yeah. That's all right. But you do get Sally sensors. Sally will definitely. Yeah. Well, it's not a. Uh, this would not be a oh, sensors role. No. Yeah. This is going to be. Just, like, looking through. This is going to be uh, yeah, uh, reason plus. Better than our sensors. Cool. This is going to be. I'll let you do. Just the DC. I'll let you do reason science on this. All right. Um, Should I? Reason science and um, Sally Ride. She is going to roll. Computer well, science. Roll. Computer science. The Sally is going to roll. Yeah, she's going to roll computer and. No, I'm going to say computer and con. Do we want to use a um, It depends. Elemental? What's the difficulty? One or two? The difficulty here is going to be two. If we do an extra And that's die. with the adjustment. Oh, wait. She doesn't get oh, the no. adjustment. So it's oh, three. No, she doesn't. Difficulty yeah. is three. Mm -hmm. Then we should probably. Well, definitely. Yeah. We're going to spend yeah. our only momentum to get an extra die okay. for Talon. So we have three. The difficulty is three. The ship's right. also going to be rolling with us. Cool. Let's do this. Here we go. All right. That's all. Yeah. Oh, okay. One success, one complication. One failure, yeah. Oh, okay. And one success from Sally. One success so from we Sally. Had two that success. means two successes and a complication. And a complication. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Talon, as you're entering it and you're scanning through the, the logs as the computer's doing the scan, what you see popping up on the display is your rejection letter from the Vulcan Science Academy. What? Um. Now, <laughs> you you see it there, plain as day. Uh, I'm trying to blink it away. <laughs> Talon, what are those readings? What's the report? Talon, you hear? What does it say? What is the report? I have not achieved entry into the science academy for advanced studies. Does this come as a surprise to you? You look up into the face of your father, across the room from you. Your mother is seated, seating next to him. Uh, she's on the sofa. The Vulcan air is hot and thick as it always is on this planet. Um, and he is looking at you stoically as always, with a raised eyebrow. But he does seem to be critical as he asks you this question. I'm not surprised because I did not have very strong references. He turns and looks down at your mother who has not stopped staring at you. And he just says, perhaps this would best be a conversation held between mother and daughter. I will excuse myself. I do not see why, father, you should excuse yourself. He says, then it will become clear. And he turns very coldly and leaves the room. You detect that hint of displeasure, almost, the Vulcan way, um, that subtle containment as he moves out of the room. And as he leaves, um, you are alone with Venura, your mother. Um, she's sitting, um, her hands rested on her lap, and she says, your sister was the better choice. Well, mm. if you could only choose one child to send your reference in for, then... That is correct, and we chose your sister. Tasana will make an excellent Vulcan scientist. It is unfortunate that your curiosity and more mystical things has cost you so greatly, Talon. It is unfortunate that the Science Academy and my own parents cannot see the value in seeking diversity in science and logic. She rises from her chair and she moves closer to you and stops and says, what is truly unfortunate is how you refuse to see. You refuse to see the truth, that you are chasing nothing, and that your fascinations with these 
illogical pursuits, these mystical endeavors. It has caused people to speak. It has caused your father some level of trouble. If we had not intervened, it would be entirely possible that your sister would not have gotten into the academy. I believe, Mother, that you are placing blame on my curiosity when perhaps there should be some question of whether it was wise to keep our family history so secret all these years. You, she pulls back a little bit and says, we know what is best for our family. We have chosen the Vulcan way, Talon. And the Vulcan blood runs strong in us. There is other blood that runs in us as well. You are a Vulcan. You are not a Bajoran. Talon just considers this. Is there anything else? Yes. I found your grades to be inadequate to recommend you. Even without your fascination with the mysticism, I still would think that it would benefit the family more if your sister had gone. Your studies have clearly suffered underneath your idle fascination with the mystical things. But perhaps we can find you a husband here on Vulcan, and you can find a new way of life and bring some measure of respect to the family once again. You have decided that I should be married then to my intended. What other choice is there? There are other choices, Mother. She there are other science academies. There's the Daystrom Institute. There's Starfleet Advanced Studies. You will not go to Starfleet. There are other Vulcans who have, one other Vulcan who has done so. Perhaps there is a place for someone. I forbid it. This conversation is over now. Reflect upon your failings, Talon. And with that, she abruptly turns and walks past you. It's very quiet in the living room. Outside of the sun setting on Vulcan. I walk outside and stand on the front step and look at the sunset. You're on the balcony uh, just outside your room. And you can't help but glance down at some of your data pads that you've had through study, a lot of research. You're a contingency planner. And just beyond one of the data pads, you can't help but notice a small silver point at the upper left corner of one of the David pads. I pick up the data pad and inspect it. Pulling it aside, you see the symbol of Starfleet. And a very challenging xenobiology course being offered in San Francisco on Earth. And you know full well what it will mean to disobey your mother. And you are rocked suddenly as the ship goes to red alert. What the? It's that jarring. You hear, Captain, senior staff to the bridge. Ship is under red alert. All hands to battle stations. On our way. 
Talan, what did you get from those readings? Talan, are you all right? Captain to the bridge. We're on our way. Um, moments later, you all step out of the turbo lift onto the bridge. Um, one of the uh, one of the uh, the officers that was taking over the night, night watch stands up and goes, "Sir," and you see on the view screen six Romulan warbirds. Yikes! On the view screen, no joke. Six Romulan warbirds. The sixth is decloaking as you walk up onto the bridge. You hear one of the ensigns at the back of the bridge go, "Oh my God!" Status report, sir. There. They're weapons, they're not armed, sir. They're Six Romulan arms. warbirds, sir, just decloaked. What kind of readings are you getting on them? Scanning. I, 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 the ensign looks like they're kind of shaken by the side of it. Um, Talon, you kind of move over to the science station and the ensign sees you and immediately steps away. I'm gonna go and take the helm as well. Okay, you slide into yeah, your I'm chair. Like, mm. All the staff basically mm. vacates, the senior staff yeah. takes the bridge. Um, Rue, as you sit down in the commander's chair, because um, I'm gonna guess that you, I mean, you were called to the bridge as well right, during Red Alert. Yeah, so I'm at the auxiliary tactical. Oh, that's right, you're gonna yeah. be in the tactical yeah. position. So as you take the tactical position, so go ahead and make your roll, Tom. Right. Am I rolling for? Okay. It's gonna be, uh, <coughs> this is going to be a, re yeah, this is gonna be straight up uh, reason and science. Mm -hmm. And difficulty? Difficulty on this is gonna be one. Okay. That's after the adjustment. Uh, I got one success. Okay. And Did you only roll one d20 instead of two? No, two. two. Okay. They just landed. Then, all right, yeah. so then I can. Let's go ahead and roll for Sally Ride. Nope. Okay. Six Romulan Warbirds. Fully powered. Shields are not up. Weapons are not armed. And just before we end tonight's session, you see a seventh decloak. Just off. And that's where we have to end tonight. Oh, <laughs> no! Oh, this, this show is giving me anxiety. <laughs> Seven oh. Romulan warbirds. Okay. Oh. All right, I got some homework this week. All right. All right, oh, I'm gonna rewatch yeah. uh, Balance of Terror. Yeah, you're like gonna go okay. study some okay. Romulan stuff. Okay. Um, I do. Seven. I, next time, I just I want like a. From the outside, as the doctor, once we resume next time, I want to know whether there was anything noticeable in Talon. I don't want magic psychic powers. I just want to know whether. I when we were in Med Bay and yeah. you were doing Did this. Did Talon game. just space out? Because yeah. Talon doesn't just space out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would. But you don't have to tell me now. We can. Yeah, right, no, sorry. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll save that for next week for sure. Oh, boy. So we'll wrap oh. this up. Yeah. Oh. That was a great game, you guys. Wow. It's a great game. Okay, Big, mysterious crap going on. Um, I'm, I'm laughing that there's a Targ wandering around on the ship that's really yeah, happy to be there. Targ. Just so happy to be here, guys. Targ. Just a so Targ happy to be here. I was disappointed I was not oh down there. Like, the whole time we are not like, keeping a puppy on. Targ, really... Sage. Oh, no. <laughs> I want to oh. keep it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, sure, you want to keep it, but then I'm going to end up feeding it. I know, I'll walk it every day. No, you will not. We are not having a puppy Targ. So that's I'll where we're going to leave off tonight's it. episode. Seven Romulan warbirds decloaking right in front of the Sally Ride, <laughs> oh. which, by the way, by the way, still in warp. So keep that in mind too, because you guys are still traveling. So, oh, it's traveling alongside us yes. in warp. Yes. Seven Romulan warbirds have something fishy going on. Decloaked There's something fishy oh. in warp yeah. in front of the Sally Ride. <laughs> that's so don't forget that part. I don't think that's a thing, guys. That's a <laughs> little. Uh, you can't run a cloak in warp. So we'll get to that. That's we'll get to that next. We'll get to that next Wednesday. Okay. All so right. thank you so much for tuning in to Shield of Tomorrow. We will oh, see you. We will see you next Wednesday night. Until then, hailing frequencies closed. Thanks for tuning in to Shield of Tomorrow. If you enjoyed this, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. We'll be here every week with the ongoing adventures of the USS Sally Ride. New episodes air on Geek and Sundry Twitch and Alpha every Friday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you'd like to see more, you can start your free 30-day trial on projectalpha.com. Yeah.